Ayan, so good morning. Uh, isang uh, productive na morning po sa ating lahat. Good morning po to all our court personnel and welcome to the training workshop on the e-payment of legal fees in small claims cases. So an introduction, I am Patricia Santos uh, from the Office of the Court Administrator. I will be your host uh, slash facilitator for this morning. So to begin uh, our uh, program, uh, we will begin uh, with the invocation uh, to be followed by the Philippine National Anthem, followed by the SC hymn. Almighty God, we stand in your holy presence as our supreme judge. We humbly beseech you to bless and inspire us so that what we think, say, and do will be in accordance with your will. Enlighten our minds, strengthen our spirit, and fill our hearts with fraternal love, wisdom, and understanding so that we can be effective channels of truth, justice, and peace. In our proceedings today, guide us in the path of righteousness for the fulfillment of your greater glory. Amen. Yeah. 
Ayun talaga yung mga nangyayari no, kapag webinars. But again, I would like to say welcome to all our court personnel who are now in our session. Welcome to the training workshop on the e-payment of legal fees in small claims cases happening August 10, 2021. Ayan. And uh, we would like to thank everybody, you know, all our court personnel who took the time on behalf of the Office of the Court Administrator to be with us this morning to learn more about how we can properly do the process for the e-payment of legal fees in small claims cases. Ayan. So, maraming salamat po. We are joined this morning by our Clerk of Courts, uh, uh, cashier personnel, and assisting collecting for personnel from all our first level courts. Ayan. Isang uh, productive morning sa ating lahat. I hope that we will be able to have an educational and informative morning. Uh, flashing in your screens right now is our webinar program. So, we're done with the first part. Uh, some delays, but don't worry, we will catch up. So the this webinar is divided into three. We have part one, online payment and verification, part two, real-time payment management, and part three, reports and audit requirements. Ayan. And uh, later on, may mga nagtatanong sa ating Q&A box. Yes, we will be having an open forum, so we will have time to address all your questions. But in the meantime, may I remind everybody no, uh, about some important uh, webinar rules and online etiquette reminders. Of course, any workshop, any webinar, uh, lalo na ngayon na everything is online, uh, we would like to remind everybody of some of the things we have to keep in mind uh, para maging productive and seamless ang ating webinar experience. So first reminder, uh, please take part in every activity. Focus and participate in the workshop. Give us your 100% attention. I know we are in our homes, but right now I hope that you can find the time to, yung iba pala are in their homes. Some are, I think, uh, in their offices, but I hope that you can give your 100% attention, take down notes. Uh, and engage in the activities prepared by the speaker. Be an active participant and make the most of the time allotted for the learning. Next reminder, be prepared for technical difficulties. And kaway kaway sa lahat ng mga nagkaroon ng technical difficulties going in the webinar. Kasama na kami dun. <laughs> So in case of internet or device issues, please inform the host. We have the Q&A box specifically for all your concerns. So please let us know lang if you disappear from uh, the feed. And you can send a message via the Q&A chat box for that. Or you can call 0285-257-157 only for concerns related to the Philippine Judiciary 365 platform. So only for the Microsoft Teams. Ayan. Pag nagka-problema kayo sa internet, tawagan niyo si Converge or si PLDT. Ayan. All right. Our next reminder is for everybody to please accomplish all polls. So we will be flashing polls later on. Uh, we are using Microsoft Forms. So I would like to remind everyone to be ready with their cell phones. Uh, may QR code scanners naman po siguro tayong lahat so that we can uh, participate in the polls. Bakit po? Kasi to check attendance, if you notice, this is not like uh, the other webinars we're in, naka-on lang yung camera nyo. So to check attendance, uh, the participants will be required to check in using the polls. Polls will be flashed at certain times in between topics to make sure if attendees are paying attention to the lecture. Ayan. And our next reminder, please use health breaks wisely. Ayan. Health breaks are allowed, but keep them to a minimum. We have breaks before a new topic, uh, assuming we still have time. So make sure to use them well during the designated time. This helps limit the distractions as well. And our last reminder for everyone, please use the Q&A box responsibly. responsibly. Uh, limit it only to concerns related to the webinar. Ha? Uh, and share only comments or questions that are relevant or when the host or the speaker specifically asks everyone to use the Q&A box for an activity. Think before you send as the tone may be misinterpreted by our colleagues. Diba wala kasing tone or emotion when we speak uh, through chats, diba? So just be careful for that. All right, so I think uh, we are all uh, very much ready and well reminded of our online etiquette and house rules for this morning. So. To formally welcome everybody into our webinar, I would like to call on uh, 
to give uh, the welcome remarks, let us all welcome from the Office of the Chief Justice, Attorney Jed Sherwin Oy. Thank you, Pat. Good morning, dear colleagues, and welcome to the training on the e-payment of legal fees in small claims cases using Fortune Pay. And this will eventually form part of the judiciary e-payment solution currently being developed for the court. Huh? Uh, first and foremost, let me thank uh, the wonderful team led by the Office of the Court Administrator, the Court Management Office, and the, uh, then the Management Information Systems Office that organized this workshop as part of our digital transformation journey. Allow me to also thank uh, the Fortune Pay uh, Fortune Pay team in partnering with the court and for actively taking part in our quest for digital transformation. You know, for us to be successful in transforming digitally, we will continue in building on our strategic alignment towards the initiative, develop capabilities needed to adapt to the change, build and maintain a culture that sustains the change. Paper intensive processes such as assessment and payment of court fees will eventually be complemented, if not totally replaced, by digital and automated capabilities. New platforms using, using a blockchain technology, artificial intelligence, and machine learning will likewise eventually allow the courts to assess data and access all of these data and documents remotely in real time and securely and to manage finances more quickly and effectively. Nonetheless, we understand that these changes are hard, change is difficult, and the amount of time that needs to be invested in these transformations needs to focus uh, to demand focus not only of the leadership in court, in the judiciary, but also the key stakeholders within our organization, such as you, the clerks of court, and the cashiers, who are helping us drive this change as well. You know, times are quickly changing and the demands of our society are likewise evolving. There are plenty of pain points and opportunities that exist within the judiciary today that can be addressed only if we truly transform, adapt, and embrace change. Uh, I firmly believe that this necessary adoption of change, while it must be held from top down, must also simultaneously happen bottom up. Anyway, I know you're all excited to get started with the training, so I will no longer take so much of your time. But let me thank you again for your commitment and dedication. Rest assured that the Chief Justice and the Court Administrator will be with you side by side, advocating change and reform as we move forward towards serving the Filipino people better and in dispensing justice more effectively, efficiently, and securely. Thank you very much, all of you. Mabuhay and stay safe. Ayan. Thank you very much, Attorney Sherwin. So while I'm just trying to get back to sharing my screen with you, uh, we will be proceeding with our first uh, live poll. So if you have your phones ready, I hope you can see the QR code on the screen right now. Ayan, pa live poll lang po muna tayo to get to know our audience and set our expectations. When you open that, you're supposed to be redirected to a Microsoft form. Please let us know if you're already in the form. So I hope you were able to access the form. It's asking for your complete name designation. Whether or not you have downloaded the Fortune Pay mobile application. For those whose registration went seamlessly, you were able to send the form or the link rather, wherein you would be able to see the Fortune Pay mobile application download site. All right, so we have 190 responses so far. So I guess nahirapan yung iba siguro pumasok sa QR code. Let me share what we have. Uh, screen. Ayan. So right now it's still registering responses, but most of our attendees, as expected, are clerks of court. And then we have some branch clerk of court joining us this morning. And we have a number of cashier personnel and collecting personnel officers. Ayan. So a lot of you have already downloaded the Fortune Pay mobile application without issue but at least 20 encountered some technical difficulties. Ayan. And then many of you have been able to access the Fortune Pay online portal. We have at least more than 200 people. And again, we still have people who have encountered technical difficulties. So yung hindi pa po nakakapag-download and nakakapag-access ng Fortune Pay online portal, we will be sending in the link 
in our chat box. We will be sending the link to our chat box. Ayan. So, what do we expect to learn from today's discussion? Ayan. More knowledge about Fortune Pay. Yes, we will learn the new system to learn more about the digital process. Ayan. So, we can see all the responses and we will try to acknowledge this and adjust as we go along the talk. Ayan. So, I share ko din to sa ating mga speakers, lalo na sa CMO, para ma-address na yung mga technical na kailangan natin ma-address. Alright, so, we have 307 responses and growing. So, babalikan natin to. We will be checking the results again uh, later on for our reference office so thank you very much please continue uh filling out the form and now we will go back to our uh, main course so let us so now that everybody has been uh filling out the live poll number one don't worry so mga hindi pa fill out just continue filling it out uh, we will be using it for our reference and for the attendance. So now uh, let us proceed to the first part of our webinar uh, to discuss online payment and verification. Let us all welcome uh, from Fortune Pay for Business Services. Uh, she's the Business Services Supervisor. Let us welcome Miss Kathleen Gabby. Hi, thank you, Miss Pat. Thank you, Attorney Sherwin. Thank you so much. So um, good morning, everyone. First, well, I want to thank all of you for taking time to attend our webinar. Also, I would like to acknowledge the presence of my dear colleagues who are present here today. Okay, to start with, again, my name is Kath, and I will be the main presenter today on behalf of Fortune Pay. So Fortune Pay is a fintech, a technology, a fintech company established here in the Philippines and is supervised by the BSP or the Banco Central ng Pilipinas. Fortune Pay is a digital wallet that empowers Filipinos to access easy payments through its contactless platform. Fortune Pay also offers a variety of transactions or payment transactions such as bills payment, topping up of mobile load credits, and also payment for other government fees. Since the Supreme Court is taking the first step to digital payments, litigants can now make payments for their small claims digitally from a safe, secure, and real-time transaction, even right at the comfort of their very own home. So our e-payment solution offers uh, in-app payment of small claims, QR payment inside court stations, online portal for real-time management. So uh, moving on, let's, let us now proceed to the downloading of the Fortune Pay app. So all you have to do is scan the QR code showing on the screen for those na hindi pa po nakakapag-download uh, ng Fortune Pay app. You can just simply scan po yung um, QR code sa screen para ma-download nyo na and make sure uh, that you have completely filled up all the necessary requirements for KYC purposes required by the Banca Central. Okay, so, and the good thing about this po is it, it is absolutely free of charge. Okay, so uh, do you have any questions po? May naka-download na po ba kayo without difficulties? Okay po, so uh, again po, sa mga hindi pa nakaka-download, pwede nyo pong iscan lang yung screen, uh, yung QR code sa screen para ma-download and then fill up all the necessary um requirements then click next para po finish yung process so after that currently we have more than 20,000 and still growing touch point for cash in and cash out nationwide so some of the major cash in and cash out partners are shown in the screen so for example uh 7-eleven we also have online banking for bpi po <clears throat> So for example, for 7 11 you just have to, uh, after logging into your Fortune Pay account, you just have to click the plus sign beside your wallet balance and then uh, select 7 11 enter the amount, and then that's the reference number. So you just have 
have to screenshot and go to the 7-Eleven uh, near the 7-Eleven outlet for the payment. So that's uh, ganun po siya kadali para mag top up. So now, since you have sufficient balance na with your on your Fortune Pay wallet, let's now proceed to the main discussion about online payment and verification. Okay, so once litigants receive the assessment form, they can now log in and process payment using their Fortune Pay account. Okay, so uh, ito po yung uh, dashboard natin. After logging in, the litigants will need to click government payment from the home screen dashboard and select e-court payment. So ito pong nakikita nyo sa screen na may, ha may hand is yan po yung pinaka dashboard ng ating Fortune Pay app. So under um, government payments, makikita nyo po dyan ang court e-payment. And then uh, once you click the court e-payment, it will now populate a set of fields that is required to be filled out by the litigants. So the fields are as follows. So kailangan po nilang uh, mag-select ng region first as well as the court station and also yung litigants name. Yung pong ating victims compensation fund is set by 5 pesos for conveniency of the litigants. And yung STF account naman po natin, yung STF fund, is pre-filled up po siya as 1,000 pesos, but ito po is editable. So, sa con for the convenience of litigants, ang kailangan na lang po nilang i-fill up is yung rest ng uh, mga legal fees pa. Okay, so uh, they can also key in the case title po for the court references naman po. And also the assessment form number. Okay, so after that, uh, manghihingi po siya ng transaction pin so you just have to confirm the details of the transaction and then uh, ilalagay niyo lang po yung inyong uh, transaction pin and then just click next and ito na po yung transaction uh, successful screen meaning po successful na yung payment na ginawa ni litigants or ni litigant. So just a reminder please do not forget to screenshot I-remind po natin yung mga litigants natin na i-screenshot yung transaction successful screen for their future references naman po or parang proof of payment nila. So instead of lining up uh, uh, for the queue at the bank at, uh, to deposit at the five different bank account which is very uh, risky po kasi manual pa nilang i isusulat yung mga bank account sa limang bank account pa sa banko you can just do it in a fortune pay app in just a single click lang po. Lahat po na yun, hindi na sila pipila sa banko. So, uh, sa bahay na lang sila mag, pwedeng magbayad na. Lahat na po yun, mababayaran yung lahat ng legal fees. Okay po. So, uh, is there um, any more question po pa so far? Okay, so uh, once the litigants um, has been made their um, payment at the same time the court will be able to see uh, and to view the payment transaction in real time using naman po yung kanilang FPOP or yung uh, Fortune Pay online portal. Okay, so sa transaction history po makikita nila yung buong transaction or yung pinaka-updated na transaction made by a litigant. So ang makikita po sa transaction history is yung total amount. Once you click po yung specific transaction, makikita nyo naman po yung buong details ng inyong assessment form ni litigant. So, it's almost the same po. Nandyan po si um, court station, nandyan ang transaction ID, assessment form number, case title, and the litigant's name which is very important. And also, yun pong details ng kanyang payment for each of the legal fees. Uh, or legal fees. So, yun po yung makikita natin sa transaction. So, napaka... Um, very informative nung ating um, FPAP kasi nandun na po siya lahat. You don't need to go back and go back po sa mga papel na nilitigans para lang i-double check ko po. Masak na yung payments kung tama po ba yung amount na in, na, na deposit ni litigant. So, dyan pa lang po, in just one click, kita nyo na po siya lahat. Nakikita na lahat ni Court Station. Okay, so um, that concludes po yung ating um, part one. So, meron po ba tayong um, any, any question po so far? Ayan. Ayan. Thank you very much. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
All right. And uh, now uh, we would like to welcome our next speaker because the for our first topic, we actually have uh, a second speaker to supplement the discussion. So let us now welcome to discuss naman uh, further for part one from the Court Management Office, uh, Mr. Dexter Ilagan. Hello, good morning, everyone. Thank you, Ma'am Patricia. So our reigning Miss Earth Philippines, good morning. <laughs> Uh, uh, one of our attendees, uh, Assistant Court Administrator Lilian Baribalco. Good morning, ma'am. Uh, Attorney Sherwin Uy from the Office of the Chief Justice, Alexander Gasmundo. Good morning, sir. Uh, to Fortune Pay people and our tech team from MISO. Uh, good morning. So, good morning, colleagues from the first level courts. Of course, all of you won't be here, would be present here today if not because of the audit team leaders of the Fiscal Monitoring Division, so our division, who work around the clock in sending and answering your queries and monitoring your registration for the last five days and until today. So thank you guys. So hi everyone. So this is a walkthrough to the guidelines issued for the electronic payment channel for small claim cases and the use of the Fortune Pay online portal. So the circular governing the electronic payment channel for small claims, the OCA circular number 102-2021, which was issued on July 23, 2021. This uh, OCA circular, so it uh, provides the guidelines for the electronic payment of legal fees so in small claim cases. So before we discuss the guidelines, uh, in this 102 to 2021. So I, I want to point out something for the important issues and concern uh, about the online payment of legal fees. So before the circular, so the so we have the 164 2020. So the OCA circular 102 2021, the circular for electronic payment channel for small claims. So did not repeal this OCA circular 164 2020. So it was issued on October 7, 2020. So the uh, the OCA uh, authorized online payment of parties, uh, online payment, so they can use GCash, so this Fortune Pay, so Shopee Pay or Lazada Pay, so they can use that uh, mode of a channel for payment of legal fees. So they can also bank transfer if they have land bank accounts or union bank accounts, so they can transfer funds to the uh, our account to pay the legal fees. So they can also pay to other branches of the land bank. So can pay the legal fees and other collections. So when we say other collections, so it covers the collections for fiduciary fund and sheriff trust fund. So the, the bail, posting or filing of bail bonds, so consignations, expropriation, so they can use online bank transfer inter-branch. So you cannot refuse uh, if the party wants to pay using this mode of payment, so they are allowed. Okay. Um, the procedure in doing the online payment or bank transfer, so it, it, this circular involves uh, all cases. So, yung ating 102 2021, it covers only small claims cases. So, it, but you should be aware, familiar with the provisions under this 164 2020. So, the issue once of the 102 2021, we want to eliminate the small claims cases uh, from this uh, mode of payment in the 164 2020. So, kung if the party is pay, uh, paying small claim cases, you can advise them to use the uh, Fortune Pay app. So, although uh, may may finga lang yung sa, con, sa Fortune Pay, but ma, mas convenient talaga tong ano uh, Fortune Pay app. Okay, so yung uh, the 164 2020. So the if the clerk report receive an electronic pleading or a manually uh, submit a pleading, so file the case. So the clerk report shall issue an assessment form or order of payment pursuant to 164 2020. And uh, so he will give or send through electronic mail the assessment form or order of payment to the party. So the party can pay 
the space. So usually it's six to seven or eight accounts in uh, filing of cases. So uh, the party shall pay kaya lang. This is the downside of the 164-2020. So the party shall pay the total amount for these funds to one single account, your fiduciary fund bank account only. So if you can uh, see or experience the this mode of payment, so it's very complicated. So you have to identify the, the deposits or payment made to your fiduciary fund account. So why fiduciary fund account? If fiduciary fund account is a local account na kayo yung may control. So all lower courts, merong fiduciary fund account. So even the STF included sa pag-deposit sa FF account. So lahat yun i-identify. So you are required to withdraw these temporary deposits from your fiduciary fund account twice a month. So on the 15th day and before the end of the month. So you have to prepare schedule. So we have we prescribe a format for the list of temporary deposits. So kailangan identify nyo talaga isa-isa yun. So yun yung mahirap para sa 164-2020. So yun yung the difference between 164-2020 and the electronic payment of small claims. So the electronic payment yung 102-2021. So ang procedure, so assessment form pag nag-file, so the party can pay through electronic filing ng pleadings. So yung small claims, uh, then you're going to issue assessment form. So only five accounts for small claims. So wala na tayong mediation fund for small claims. So JDF, such LRF, BCF, and STF only. Then, ang, uh, the, the advantage, the, if he, the party use the fortune pay app, so, so the fortune pay can provide us the transfer of deposits or payment to its respective account. So ito yung kagandahan ng fortune pay, diretso na sa JDF, sa five accounts to. So hindi na kayo gaga like doon sa 164-2020, kailangan sa FIDO lang i-deposit yon, So, hindi kayo allowed na ipadeposit to its respective accounts if the party uh, use online payment or interbranch or bank transfer. Kasi you, you, wala kayong uh, source or wala kayong way to verify the deposits to JDF and such because ang nagme-maintain yan, Supreme Court lang. So, hindi nyo mabibu. That's why sa FIDO ipapadeposit yon And you were required to enroll your fiduciary fund account sa we access facility ng Landba to confirm deposits doon sa paggumamit sila ng online payment using yung 164-2020. Pero dito sa Fortune Pay, so wala na, ang i-verify nyo lang, punta lang kayo sa Fortune Pay online portal. So you, you would see the payment there. So kung pumasok ba sa JDF, so merong... Uh, papakita mamaya yung format nung, nung list of collections. So you would see kung ano. So you have to attach the list ng collection na yun if you're going to issue a receipt. So we have a separate topic for the issuance of receipt. Okay. So this is the, the uh, mode of payment if uh, or the process if you the party use the fortune pay. So convenient talaga. Uh, although may bayad. So, we suggest na it's favorable on our part eh. And uh, the audit, so hindi mahirap. Kaya kung uh, we encourage you, kung may online payment na gagawin ng party, kung lalo na kung small claims, so you can advise them to use the Fortune Pay app. So, mas madali ito sa inyo and sa admin. Okay, pag-monitor. So, electronic payment channel for small claims. So, we divided the topic into three. So, yung issuance of official receipts, underpayment or overpayment or erroneous payment. So, there are instances na may overpayment or underpayment. So, the part two, yung list of collections and deposits. So, papakita na, papakita dyan yung uh, kung ano yung itsura ng list of collections. And financial. So, and third part, yung opening of STF accounts. So, required na mag-open kayo ng STF accounts. Okay. So, yung part one, so, yung o cashier collect, so issued ng July 23. So, ang una nga, issuance of assessment form. So, 
we provided the format for the assessment form. Okay, ang example natin, so Metropolitan Trial Court ng Makati. So the heading should be the court type, the Metropolitan Trial Court or Municipal Trial Court in Cities, Municipal Trial Court, so MCTC, so or Municipal Circuit Trial Court. Then your municipality or city followed by the province. Then the judicial uh, region. Assessment form. So assessment, so you will provide the may details doon. Yung case file, kung ano. So it's this form is particularly prescribed for small claims. So the amount involved, ilalagay nyo, basis. So the, the purpose of this one, so parang this would be the reference. Kung Eh, magbe-verify kung matapos yung case, the clerk of court, or makikita may basis siya. So, Nag-issue ng judgment ng court. So, awarding monetary award doon sa party. So, you can compare kung baka mas malaki yung i-award ng court sa at sa party. So, kung may sobra dito sa i-award, we eh, unpaid yun. You have to assess the uh, deficiency. So, may kailangan magbayad pa yung party. Kung more than dito sa claim na nilagay nyo. So, ito yung magiging reference nyo. Kaya, ipapalagay natin dito. Okay. But the assessment form, if you issue assessment form, mag issue pa kayo pag nabayaran na ng legal fees form. So, required yung legal fees form. So, the same information. So, we are uh, sending or prescribing another format of legal fees form. So, and we drafted a circular para i-amend na yung format ng old legal fees form. So we're going to uh, take the uh, details here. We're going to put that in the new form of legal fees form. So yung so assessment form should be sequentially numbered. So it's provided under 102 2021. And must clearly specify the amounts to be paid. So ito, ilalagay nyo talaga yung amount per fund dyan. So nakalagay yung bank accounts kung saan i-deposit. So these four accounts, uh, fixed na to. So hindi na to uh, magbabago. So unless mag-open tayo ng bagong account. Pero laging nakalagay itong apat. So yung sheriff's trust fund, so you have to input the your STF account here. Para diretsyo sa STF account nyo pag nagbayad ang party. So, unlike the 164 2020, lahat sa FIDO papasok. Ngayon, diretsyo na to sa mga accounts na ilalagay nyo dito. Okay, yung 1,000, diretsyo. Uh, so, it directly deposited to STF, your local STF account. So, why doon sa 164, pinasama namin yung STF sa FIDO i-deposit? Kasi para isang verification nyo lang. Pag nag-verify kayo ng FIDO, temporary deposit sa FIDO doon sa 164 2020. Kaya lang, it's maraming masyadong item kayo yung i-verify doon. Unlike dito, pag sa small claims using fortune pay, diretsyo na. So, it's directly remitted or transferred to its particular account. Okay, so yung assessment number should be sequentially issued. So, kung nag-issue na kayo, you use assessment form na hindi ganito yung format, you can continue the numbering. So, susundin nyo na lang tong format. So, paano nyo ma- Yung code, may code, we provided a code here to identify kung anong court ang yan yung, kasi we're going to view the transaction in the Fortune Pay online portal. So the auditors have access to view those transactions. So we can identify kung anong court yung uh, assessment na nakikita namin. So paano, how going, where, where can we get the code? So yung PJ365 account nyo, di ba? Like sa, yeah, sa Makati. So their email is metc one macocc at judiciary.gov.ph. So we're going to get the code here. So kung OCC or single sala, we're going to drop the, OC, or the letters OCC. Pag sa single sala, may 000, 0, 0, 0, 0 yun, you're going to drop the 30 then. So ito lang ang ilalagay natin. So metc one mac Dash itong 21, ito yung year, year 2021. Dash, so five digits. So ang inano namin, five zeros to, five digits. So you can start numbering or continue numbering if you issued assessment form na before. Okay? So ang question nyo, papaano? So naisip ko na ito, uh, what if hindi lang isang uh, small claims ang ifa file? Dahil sa 
uh, may convenience fee nga, di ba, pag nag-file. So, may 50 pesos. So, ang gusto ng party, tatlong case ang file ng small claims. So, can I uh, pay all those fees using one transaction, in one transaction? So, pwede. So, yun yun. So, nag-provide din ako ng sample. So, small claims amount involved basis. So, you have to put the amount involved also here. So, kung tatlo yun, isang 90, isang 100, isang 95 na small claims cases. So, involving three cases. So, pag in-assess nyo yan, ito total nyo ngayon. So, yung particulars, kung engaged in the business of banking and lending or similar activities, important thing in-note nyo yan sa small claims. Kasi, merong frequent filer fee. Pero, ang kinokolekta ng frequent filer fee, yung hindi engaged in business. So, yung mga walang business permit, ang magbabayad ng additional 500 pesos kung nag-file siya ng more than uh, five cases sa calendar year. So, yung ika-six uh, small claim na hindi siya engaged in business, may 500 additional frequent filer fee na for deposit sa JDF yon. So, ito tatlo pa lang. So, walang frequent filer fee at hindi siya at yung, yung payer or yung plaintiff is engaged in business. So, wala siyang frequent filer fee kahit ika six yung file niya. So, yung plaintiff pala, yung name of payer, that the, it should be the plaintiff. Ha? So, kung magpapabayad yung plaintiff, ang ilalagay na pangalan dito is the name of the plaintiff. So, ito yung magiging basis kasi natin sa pagdakit ng case. Plaintiff. Okay? So, tatlo. So, total yan. So, ito uh, for three cases to. 3,000. So, yung STF, tatlo rin. Kaya 3,000 yan. So, yung BCF, tatlo yan. So, 15 pesos. So, yung legal research, tat, uh, tatlo din to. So, 10, 10, 10. Yan. Yung, yung the, the, the JDF, merong summons fee yan. And, uh, yung such, may summons fee. So, total, 6,645. So, you have two put the name of the assessor dito tapos pipirmahan. So, if ang nag a sa court nyo is yung cashier or yung cash collecting, uh, assisting cash collecting personnel, so we assume na dapat reviewed yon ng clerk of court nyo. Kasi if there's a kung anong merong admin matter issues dito lumabas, o answerable pa rin yung clerk of court kung may kulang. Pero ang, ang deficiency ngayon can be solved to pay the additional legal fees kung may kulang. So, kung may mali man dyan, may kulang, so may request tayo, mayroong refund ng fees. Kung magkamali ng lagay, so sumobro yung binayaran, the party can request uh, the, the OCA to phone. So, may separate topic tayo sa request ng refund. Okay? To those courts na under direct payment method, uh, yung option, like yung option, Pilot courts natin sa NCR, the Valenzuela, yung um, Tagig. Uh, so, yung mga, hindi lahat ng NCR na, na under direct payment method. Pero they have already the prescribed format ng assessment form. They can continue using the uh, prescribed form na ginagamit nila ngayon. So, although kung mag magsasubmit kami, ng, uh, magpapa-approve kami kay court ad ng circular para i-uniform natin yung format ng assessment form, so, we will ask the MISO to make necessary revision or modification sa, sa format ng assessment form kung approve yung format na isasuggest namin. And yung, payment, yung order of payment. So, isasama namin doon pati yung legal fees form, bagong po format ng legal fees form. Okay, pero for the meantime, yung naka-direct payment method or naka-e-payment or naka-e-court, they can continue using the form na nandun sa system nila. Then yung posting, so under dun sa circular, yung number 4 provision sa circular, so required kayo na i-post nyo yung QR code doon sa payment windows nyo. So that will help a the paint party e, to pay the appropriate legal fees kasi i-scan lang nila yon So, diretso na yon sa account nyo, sa court nyo, yung payment. So, the, the Fortune Pay mobile app, i-display na agad yung limang funds na direkta na papasok sa local account nyo. So, yung STF account nyo, papasok na agad doon. Lalabas na as STF. Kung hindi kasi gagamit ang party ng QR code, isa-search pa nila yung court station nyo doon. Hahanapin pa 
para magbayad. So unlike kaya dapat may QR code na kayo ready sa window. So if the party wants to pay using the mobile port, uh, Fortune Pay app, so they can scan the code. So the payor will input the payment details yung Fortune Pay sa Fortune Pay mobile app. So sa cellphone niya ang pag-input so dapat careful siya susundin niya yung i-input niyang uh, details doon sa provided uh, space doon sa per fund kung JDF kung magkano nilagay niya sa assessment form yun dapat yung ilalagay ng party so the, and uh, before niya siya the party you should inform the party that before he click the proceed button to check double check the amount kung baka mali yung payment niya kasi kung may mali doon sa amount kulang kung halimbawa 1000 pesos yung babayaran 100 lang yung na-click so may deficiency yon underpayment kung may underpayment i-require nyo na naman siyang magbayad using the same app so may another fee yon magbabayad na naman siya kaya dapat i-double check niya yung amount na ina-input niya sa cellphone niya before tapping the proceed button and the payer shall provide a screenshot of the transaction ID to the clerk of court. So OCC or acting clerk of court for verification for issuance of OR. So screenshot. So pwede namang screenshot, ipakita sa inyo or isend, i-require nyo kung nag-file sa electronic filing, isend through email para ma-verify nyo yung payment. So you can print the screenshot para magiging part siya ng supporting document pag nag-issue kayo ng OR. So pag na-receive niyo ng screenshot na 'yon, you, you go you you going to access the Fortune Pay online portal. So i-verify niyo ngayon yung payment na sinabi ng party so na nagbayad siya. So ang danger kasi ang ang ini-expect namin diyan may mga parties na baka mandaya. So they can forge the uh, proof yung screenshot ng transaction ID. So pwedeng mag-print lang siya. May case na tayo ng ganyan sa valid sa validated dep deposit slip. So what more yung proof of payment baka pwede na lang dayahin yun. So kaya kailangan niyo you have to verify if the transaction is genuine kung nandoon siya sa loob ng payment uh, Fortune Pay online portal. So kung na-verify niyo na so yung proof of payment okay. So doon na kayo yung time na magi-issue ng official receipt. So ang kung ang question niyo ba hihint kaya you, you have to wait for the party to appear physically doon sa court niyo para isuhan ng OR so hindi you can verify kasi you will be notified you doon sa 3 PJ365 account kung may payment sa court niyo so pag may na-receive kayo kaya dapat lagi niyo sinecheck yung PJ365 account kung yung judge niyo lang kasi ang mahawak noon so you advise the judge na i-share sa inyo yon dahil mayro mga important uh, electronic mail na sinesend doon like sa amin sa office, doon kami nagpapadala kung kailangan may compliance kayo. So, you ask the judge. So, to share, may judges daw na ayaw mag-share ng PGA 365 account. So, pakita nyo kasi yung circular na kailangan may access kayo doon. So, ma -ma -ma so bawal yung mga personal ano doon. Email, dahil mababasa ang kakabasahan kayo doon. Baka magkabookingan kayo ni judge na. Okay. So, in case ng underpayment, so, kung mali nga yung binayad, so nag uh, short so you're going to require the party to uh, make another payment so using the same app so kung kulang ng kung JDF lang yung kulang so they can pay uh, JDF so zero zero na yung ang five yung four accounts then the deficiency under JDF fund ang i-click nyo so another proof of payment ang ipo-provide ng party doon so you're going to attach that doon sa uh, report na i-degenerate nyo. So, you have to print yung, kung na-verify nyo yung payment na pumasok, hindi lang, kailangan nyo i-print yun. Yung list ng deposit and collection. Individually yon para supporting ng OR na in-issue. Okay, so ipapakita ng Fortune Pay kung saan uh, mag-generate. So, kung napakita na nila yun, so yung yung access doon makikita nyo if you have access already there in the Fortune Pay online portal makikita nyo yun di ba may trans transaction history then reports pag kinalik nyo yung reports nakikita nyo yung transaction ng court nyo doon so i-input nyo lang yung ID ng court nyo or yung or kung paano nyo i-access yung court nyo doon so provided doon sa list okay so before nyo idadakit ha dapat kompleto yung payment Ah, 
Yung docketing ng case dapat required dyan sa Rule 141. Before you docket the case, dapat bayad na yung or completely paid na yung legal fees. Okay? Pero kung later on, hindi nyo agad napansin na kulang pala yun. So, nadocket nyo na. So, pwede yung ang request doon. So, as the judge to order the party to pay additional for the deficiency. Kung hindi yan napansin na kulang. So, yung uh, in case ng overpayment, ang erroneous payment, the party shall request the FMO. Okay, so FMO na yung re-request. Yung before yung guidelines natin, laging si Chief Justice kayo mag-re-request ng refund. Pero ngayon, meron ng guidelines na in-issue if 100,000 and below yung refund, si Court Ad uh, ang pwedeng mag-approve na niyan. So, kaya pwede nyo i-address yung refund sa Financial Management Office and... Uh, isa dito sa attendee natin, the finance people headed by attorney Hilda, A. Uh, Hilda Sumpo. So, nandito siya. So, will help, help me to answer your queries kung meron kayo. So, she'll be, I am sure she'll be glad to answer those queries kung meron kayo regarding dito sa request ng refund and the financial reports to answer the financial reports matters, issues. So, with the following documents, kailangan pag nag-request uh, ng uh, erroneous payment, may attachment yun, syempre. So, dapat may certified copy ng OR. So, yung ang er erroneous payment, kasi kung nabayad yun sa ibang court, so mali yung napili ng party na court station. So, ang naklik niya, so instead na magbabayad sa Makati, sa Manila siya, yung na-press niya, Manila. So, doon pumasok yung payment. So, erroneous payment yun. So, pag binerify nyo ng clerk of court, doon sa Makati, wala kayong makikita ang payment na binigay niyang proof. So, then, madidiscover nyo, nasa Manila pala siya nagbayad. So, pag ganun, you have to require again the party to pay. Again, doon sa, sa court nyo dapat. So, yung erroneous payment, i-request -re nyo ng refund yun sa FMO, sa Financial Management Office. So, wala siyang choice kundi magbayad ulit. Mali yung napili niya ang court station. Kaya that's why nire-require kayo na mag-generate kayo ng QR code sa window nyo para hindi magkamali ng bayad ang party sa ibang court station. Yun yung purpose natin sa QR code. So, ang, ang attachment natin, certified copy of the proof of deposit and certified copy of the monthly financial report. Ito, kung more than a month na nakapag-report na kayo ng, uh, finance, ng report, uh, financial monthly report, nakapag-submit kayo. So, pwede kayong makapag- i-attach nyo yun yung financial month reports. Pero kung hindi pa yan, the, the, uh, the other day or the same day nag nangyari yan, so ang magiging attachment nyo, yung certified copy ng official receipt and the proof of deposit. So, ang, if you're going to ask, in case ng erroneous payment, yung example ko, sa, Ma Ma sa Makati nagpo-file, sa Manila na pabayad. So, yung Manila, required bang mag-issue ng OR? Yes, required mag-issue yung Manila ng OR para sa erroneous payment dahil sa kanya pumasok. Kasi that document shall be used by the party to request the refund. So, kapag uh, may ganong erroneous payment na punta sa Manila, so Manila mag issue ng official receipt. Pero yung OR, imamark niya as erroneous payment. So, pwede niyang tatakan kung gusto niyo magpagawa ng stamp. Stamp yung erroneous payment. Or, he can print the erroneous payment there doon sa nature of payment. So, particular for refund purposes. So, yun yung kukunin ng party to attach doon sa request niya for refund. So, may letter siyang request address sa Financial Management Office. And the uh, request for refund shall be caused to doon sa, sa uh, court na pinagpapailan ng case. So, yung clerk of court, endorse yung request niya ng refund sa Financial Management Office. So, kasama itong OR na mark as erroneous payment. So, sino ang mag endorse Yung Manila ba or Makati? So, doon sa Makat, sa, sa, Ma sa Manila na napabayad. So, yung Manila ang mag endorse hindi yung Makati. Kasi, doon na bayad na mali sa Manila. So, request kayo ng gawa ng request letter ang party. So, i-endorse sa, uh, ipapareceive niya doon sa Manila Court. Ang Manila Court na, na pinagbayaran na mali, i-endorse niya yon sa Financial Management Office. Okay. So, yung part 2. So, part 2 na tayo. So, i-suspend natin ito muna dahil we'll, uh, 
the Fortune 3 people will discuss something about this before we discuss the list of collections and deposits and financial reports. Uh, back to you, Ma'am Pat. Hello, thank you, Sir Dexter Ilagan. So let's all give a virtual round of applause so wherever you are for Sir Dexter and Ma'am Kathleen for uh, their presentations. I'm sure that a lot of you really learned uh, a lot, you know, understood more the circular and how you will be able to follow the e-payment process. So again, maraming salamat, Sir Dexter and Ms. Kathleen. So at this juncture, I would like to welcome all our attendees. I think we have like 1,070 people already in the, uh, in the training session, and we would like to welcome all the newcomers. Reminder lang, uh, keep checking the announcement part because uh, we're sending, we actually sent there the, the link to the live poll number one kanina. And now uh, at this juncture, we are sharing a live poll number two. So once you scan this QR code, um, this is another attendance check for all of us. So this will lead you to a quiz. How well do you know the e-payment process? So we're going to give you a few minutes to accomplish the poll. And so we're going to check in the setting live poll. So upon checking now for our first live poll, we already have 747 responses. And for our live poll number two, which is the quiz, we already have 166 responses. Ayan. I think. Ayan, nagpo-populate pa siya. So, 3.52. So, yung mga tapos na siguro mag-fill out, you can also take a very quick health break right now. Some of you are wondering bakit we're using QR codes, no? But we're also trying to, since QR code is also a part of the e-payment process, we would like to uh, let uh, many of you, lalo na hindi techies, we can see a lot of people saying that they're not techies. We acknowledge that, no? So we're trying to help you make the transition. Ayan. So these are the questions, Kanina. Or, oh, sige, may nagsabi sa akin mamaya na lang daw at the end of the uh, discussion para makahabol yung iba. So, we will do that. So, sorry guys, uh, mamaya pa natin malalaman kung ano yung tamang sagot. So, may time pa para humabol yung iba nating mga participants. Though, I would like to uh, remind everybody to be very careful, no? Kasi para uh, dun kasi sa screen ninyo, you can notice that there's a live button sa baba, ng, uh, near the very bottom. May live button dyan. Uh, you should press that in order to actually uh, see the presentations, hear the speakers real time. Yung iba kasi nagkakaroon ng delayed, delayed telecast. So, please don't forget to do that. Right. So, let me just share my screen again. Alright. So, now we go to the next part of our webinar. So, to discuss uh, the real-time payment management topic, so ipapakita sa atin kung how you, you can navigate through the Fortune Pay online portal. Uh, let us now welcome our welcome back our speaker from Fortune Pay, uh, the Business Services Supervisor, Ms. Kathleen Gabby. Okay, so there you go. So, again, thank you so much, Ms. Patricia. Now let us go further for the details for the uh, relating to the real time payment management. So this is the actual view of the land page ng ating um, FPOP or Fortune Pay online portal. So ito po yung link sa screen kung saan pwede kayo mag log in. e-gov.fortunepay.com.ph and dito po sa ating login page, uh, hihingi po siya ng username and then yung password. So I believe meron po tayong um, ibinigay, pinirovide na username and yaka, at saka password. So upon your first login attempt, yun po yung munang gagamitin natin, username at yung password provided. 
And then, uh, once nakapag-login na po kayo, please don't forget, again, reminder, change the password. So, in the event naman po na nakalimutan ni um, Court Station yung password, pwede po siyang mag-email sa amin sa Fortune Pay uh, para po i-reset yung password. So, kami po yung magre-reset ng password for you and kami din yung magbibigay ng bagong password. So, pag nabigay na yung bagong password, uh, login po ulit kayo using the new password and again, change the password po ulit for your uh, security purposes po ng inyong account. And this time po, uh, take note na po na isave natin yung ating password para naman po sa inyo na ding uh, reference. Okay, so after that, ito na po. Once nakalagin na po kayo, ito na po yung dashboard natin. Um, just to inform you po, uh, dear colleagues, ito pong dashboard na nakikita nyo sa screen is for court station. So, meron pa rin po, meron din po tayong for court admin which is uh, handled by Miss Bing po or sila po nakakita ng lahat ng uh, transaction. Ito po is for court, uh, court station po. Okay, so sa court, uh, sa dashboard natin, makikita nyo po yung available balance ng um, court station, specific court station, yung uh, today's revenue o kung yung um, yun lang pong uh, na-collect nyo for today. And then sa pending withdrawal amount, ito po yung uh, total amount po natin on process for um, deposit. And then sa overview po natin, meron tayong from year up to date na transaction count and as well as yung transaction amount, total transaction amount from year to date din po siya. Okay, so um, okay, so for this naman po next, okay, for uh, next naman po is the business profile po natin. So sa business profile, dyan na po nyo makikita yung inyo pong QR code for each uh, court station na po yan, mga uh, dear colleagues. So paano po ninyo generate or makikita yung inyong mga QR code? So, under po ng business profile sa baba ng ating dashboard, makikita nyo po ang details ng inyong court station. So, sa tabi po, sa bandang kanan po, meron po siyang three dots. Click nyo lang po yan and then select detail. Once you select the detail po, makikita nyo na po yung buong detail ng court station. And then as well as yung ating or yung inyo pong QR code. So, click nyo lang po yung uh, QR code and then click print po. So, meron po tayong dalawang option dyan. Meron po tayong i-save as PDF for your digital copy. And pwede rin nyo naman po siyang i-print na po directly para po ma-paste nyo na po or may-post nyo na po sa inyong mga court windows. So, again, since it's pandemic, we, we would like to avoid uh, cash payment for safety purposes. And uh, gaya nga po nang nabanggit ni Sir, uh, ni Sir Dex, uh, pwede po siya, uh, mas safe po siya kasi once you scan, uh, doon na po siya magdadirect sa mismong court station po ninyo na pagbabayaran. So, mas uh, safe po siyang gamitin using uh, scan QR feature. So, again po, pwede nyo siyang i-scan na, uh, uh, pwede nyo pong siyang i-print na and then i-post yun na po sa inyong mga court uh, windows. Next po uh, sa ating um, FPOP, is yung atin pong namang mga rules and permissions. So, for the rules and permissions naman po, okay, so, yan po. So, ito po yung ating rules and permissions. So, meron po tayong three rules para sa FPAP. So, first po is yung ating court admin or sa SE admin. Yung other one po is the station admin for the court stations and the court auditor for the auditors po. So, ito po yung mga uh, rules and permission nila. For court admin po, they are allowed to add branches po. To add branch user. And also, allow din po siyang mag-add ng auditor. And for viewing of transaction and settlement history, uh, pwede niya pong ma-view yung transaction at settlement history ng lahat ng branches or lahat ng court station. For uh, generating report, kaya niya, pwede po niyang ma-generate lahat ng court um, report for all the court station. So, for the station admin naman po, sa court uh, station natin, ang pwede lang po nilang i-add is yung kanilang uh, branch user. 
yung mga staff po nila. Yun yung pwede lang po nilang i-add. For auditor, hindi po, hindi po sila pwede or allowed mag-add ng auditor. And for viewing of transaction and settlement history, ang pwede lang po nilang makita or ma-view is yung kanila pong uh, own, uh, own station lang or own court station lang ang pwede nilang ma-view. Again po, i-recap ko lang po since ngayon lang siya nag-show uh, nag po sa inyo. So, uh, I'll start po again yung sa three branches natin, court admin, station admin, and then court auditor. For court admin po natin, allow po silang mag-add branch user at mag-add ng auditor. And for the viewing of transaction and settlement history naman po, allow po silang mag-view ng lahat po ng transaction ng inyong mga court station, lahat ng court station, as well as mag-generate po ng report ng lahat din po ng court station. Now, for the court station admin po, ang allow lang po nilang i-add is branch uh, user o yung kanilang station staff, station user. Hindi po sila allow mag-add ng auditor. And for the viewing of transaction and settlement, ang mag-view lang po nilang transaction and settlement is yung kanila lang pong uh, station. As well as yung report po, generating of report, yung kanila lang din pong court station ang mag-generate nila na report. Now, for the auditor's access, court auditor, they are not allowed to add any um, access or add any additional access, but they can view the transaction history and settlement history of all the court station as well as mag-generate po ng report for all the um, court station naman din po. So, ito po yung um, rules and permission ng ating tatlong um, access po para sa Fortune Pay online portal po ninyo. Okay, so let's um, proceed po. Ms. Kat, allow me to interrupt. Yes po, sir. Ay, may question, let them know kung pwede, hindi ba sila pwede mag-remove or paano kaya should be careful sa adding. Okay, um, thank you so much for um, reminding, sir. So for the uh, removing po, hindi po allow mag-remove ang kahit sino po. Uh, any rules are not allowed to remove, but... But miss um the court admin po and fortune pay are just uh, allowed to inactivate po yung added na court um court station staff or court station admin that's going to be for your uh, audit purpose na rin po so please be reminded na please be careful po sa pag-iin ng mga information kapag nag-add po tayo ng ating mga court admin or uh, I mean, ng ating court station admin para sa mga court station po. So again, hindi po natin siya pwedeng ma-remove. Ma, ma I-inactivate lang po natin siya. Okay, okay na po, sir? Okay na. Thank you. Thank you so much po. Okay, so uh, moving forward naman po is, and ito na po yung ating um, transaction history or transaction list. I believe nakita nyo na po siya kanina dun sa uh, part 1 natin. But let me elaborate po kung ano po yung um, benefits at ano pa yung maganda sa ating um, FPOP or sa ating Fortune Pay online portal. So again po, sa ating transaction history, makikita nyo na po dyan or you'll be able to view yung transaction real time po. So, kung hindi man siya mag-update real-time, just refresh nyo lang po yung ating, yung inyong portal and then mag-update na po siya kung ano yung pinaka-latest na payment na ginawa. And you will also be able to see the details po of the litigant's payment once you click the selected transaction. So, ibig sabihin po, yung nakikita po ninyo sa transaction history is total amount pa po yan. Total amount na po yan ng payment. So, once you click po, again, lalabas po dyan yung um, almost the same or the same na nung ating um, assessment form. So, nandyan po yung court station, nandyan yung transaction ID, assessment form number, which is very important, yung case title, nandyan din po, and yung litigant's name. And isa pa pong importante is yung uh, details ng payment for each of the legal fees na binayaran ni uh, litigant. So, this will uh, further improve the efficiency or yung atin pong uh, save time sa transaction checking, which is also required on your audit and reconciliation. 
Okay, so and also this uh, on this portal po, you can do uh, transaction search po kasi meron tayo ditong uh, search option via uh, date, date range, and also via assessment form number. Um, anyway, let's um, proceed po. Again, this is the um, transaction history list po. Uh, transaction history po natin sa FPAP. So again, as I mentioned po, once you click po in specific um, transaction, makikita niyo yung breakdown ng ating, uh, or in details, more detailed one ng uh, specific transaction uh, made by the litigant po. So again, nandyan po yung ating um, court station, lahat ng information po, which is very important po sa inyong um, audit and reconciliation. So again, yung nakikita po natin dito is pwede po tayong mag uh, search. For example po, may tumawag na litigant na nagbayad last uh, last month pa po. So pwede natin siyang i-search through transaction ID or assessment form number and pwede din naman pong i-search siya by date range. So in that way po, mabilis po nating mababalikan yung record nung tumawag or may concern litigant na nagpapacheck ng kanilang payment. So hindi na po natin kailangan mag back sa mga... Um, Ano natin, yung mga naka-file po natin dyan na assessment form. So, dito pa lang po, matche-check na natin or double check na natin yung transaction na ginawa po. Uh, kahit po uh, anong date, basta po uh, pasok siya dun sa ating transaction list. Kahit po sa, sa pinaka very first transaction na ginawa uh, under your court station. So, pwede po siyang i, -i, -i search po dyan. And also, ang maganda po dito is Lahat po ng kailangan ninyo is in just one click lang po. So, lahat ng kailangan nyo uh, i-check uh, para i-double check naman po sa inyong uh, bank recon, dito nyo na po siya and maja-generate nyo sa FPAP rin po. So, hindi nyo na kailangan lumabas, hindi nyo na kailangan mag magbuklat ng kahit ano pa po ninyong uh, file para po i-double check po sa inyong mga pagre-recon naman po. Okay, so let's proceed on the next slide. Okay, for the uh, portal transactions and settlement naman po, this yung itsura po ng ating settlement um, history naman po, ito po siya. So, showing on the screen is uh, the transaction and settlement screen. So, all transactions after 6 p.m., po, which is our cut of uh, time, will be processed for banking deposit to, uh, to your respective land bank accounts. So, that is on a daily basis. So, it will take few hours for processing. So, for those under processing, pa po, it will show pending. But once it's uh, deposited, to your uh, respective uh, bank account, it will show na rin po as deposited. So, yun po yung mga, yung pong pending is yun po yung mga transaction uh, after the cut-off period or uh, after the cut-off time, which is 6 p.m. Okay, so, next uh, slide is, uh, as you can see, po, meron tayong, uh, as I mentioned earlier, meron tayong uh, export option Para po sa inyo yan, for reconciliation and uh, audit purposes, you can also uh, have the option. You have the option to export the transaction history uh, into Excel format po. So, uh, pwede nyo po siyang i-date range kung ano lang pong date yung gusto ninyong i-export. And then just click uh, export and magsisave na po siya as Excel format. So, that's gonna be for your convenience na rin po for reconciliation and audit purposes. So, uh, parang hindi na po kayo mag-aantay ng maggagawa ng sarili niyong report ay hindi na po kayo mag-aantay sa kung sino para po makapag-generate ng report. So, sa inyo na, sa inyo pa lang po mismo, pwede niyo na siyang i-export uh, yung mga details para kayo na mismo yung mag-check rin po. So, parang uh, napaka-convenient para po sa inyo kasi hawak ninyo po lahat ng access. Okay. So, speaking of report, so, this is the report format you will be receiving on a daily basis. So, you'll be able to see the specific payment and details for each legal fees po successfully paid by the litigants. And uh, this will also be the basis for the settlement amount receivables. 
which makes it easier for you also for your bank uh, reconciliation purposes po. So, uh, ito pong uh, report nito, as you can see, detailed one po siya kasi nandito po yung um, specific amounts for each um, assessment form. And yung total po dito is ma the double check ninyo po sa total amount deposited din po. So, yung report pa lang sa FPAP nyo na makikita. So, it's very, uh, saves a lot of time po. If the reports naman po is, uh, can it be generated, it means po it's still under process. So, the report will be available after the amount has been uh, deposited to your bank account. Just give, uh, just, uh, you just have to wait for the amount to be reflected on your bank account. So, after 6 p.m. po, which is the cut of time, kung gusto niyo po siya agad ma makita and wala pong nagre-reflect na, na report or wala nage-generate na report, just wait for a few uh, a few moments for a few hours since nage-generate pa po yung report since katatapos lang po ng ating cut of time, which is uh, again po 6 p.m. po. And uh, you will also be, uh, you will also receive naman po uh, a daily report from us, Fortune Pay, which uh, will be sent to your um, email accounts every uh, every day po. That's going to be uh, on a daily basis then. Okay. So, um, I guess that concludes din po yung ating part two. So, again po, yung remind ko lang po, uh, remind ko lang po for password reset uh, request sa amin po siya i-email, kindly email us. And then, to request inactive um, court stations and other technical issues, pwede nyo po siyang erase sa inyong court admin and pwede nyo rin po siyang erase sa amin. But I think mas uh, prefer nila i-consolidate lahat ng concerns. So, ito po yung email support na pwede ninyong pagsendan ng inyo pong mga concerns as well as yung phone number and then yung amin pong chat support sa Viber. So, thank you so much po, uh, Ms. Pat. Okay, thank you very much, Miss Kathleen Gabby from Fortune Pay. Ayan. So, yes, that concludes our uh, topic two, part two, real time payment management. So, I hope that uh, through her discussion, no, you're able to familiarize yourselves uh, with the Fortune Pay online portal or what we easily call uh, FPAP. So, I know you guys have a lot of questions. Uh, send you na lang sa Q&A and later on sa open forum. Uh, we might be able to discuss uh, majority of them. So now it's time for our live poll number three. Ayan. So you can, you can, I hope you can see the QR code flash on the screen. So it's another quiz checking if you know your way around the Fortune Pay online portal. We have also sent in the announcement panel um, the link for the live poll. Sana na access nyo na. So we will be giving everybody two minutes. So right now it's 10.51. So mga 10.53, we can proceed. It's also the time for you to take a quick health break. Kung kailangan nyo mag-unat-unat ng onte. You can do that now. Also, for the information of everyone, no, my 10 second delay, yung ating live from our end. Someone ang tatanong no, for QR code. Actually, uh, ako, I personally use mga QR code scanner apps. Or dati nung hindi ko pa alam na may app pala na ganun, ginagamit ko yung scanner ng Viber. So, ayan yung mga tanong. Lahat yan na discuss kanina ni Miss Kathleen. 226 responses. Keep them coming. Later on, sa mga nagtatanong, we will be discussing before the Q&A, eh, before the open forum, para at least in the asking mood na kayo. Para rin mabigyan ng chance yung iba na hindi pa nakakasagot. No? So, reminder, live poll number three na ito. If you haven't done live poll number one and two, all the links are published in our Q&A chat box. All right, so it's 10.55. I hope everybody is almost done with the polls. 
And I hope yung kailangan ng health break, nakapag-health break na. All right, so I think we can proceed no, with our uh, next, with the next part of our webinar. So, uh, next slide, please. Sir Darwin, yeah. So now, welcome everyone to the third part of our webinar. Here, we will be talking about uh, reports and audit requirements. So it's my pleasure to welcome back uh, our speaker. No, let, next slide, please. Let's welcome from uh, the Court Management Office once again, uh, Sir Dexter Ilagan. Thank you, Ms. Pat. Uh, reigning Miss uh, Earth Philippines again. Thank you. Okay, we're back sa part two. So part two is about list of collections and deposits and monthly financial reports. So Miss Kat mentioned, I uh, showed you how to uh, view and access the reports. So there is a daily report and a format for the monthly reports. So yung, the daily reports, that would be the verification window or you, the, the place where you can verify the payments ng parties. Also, the FOP shall generate a list of collections and deposits for the five funds which shall serve as the proof of deposits. The said list of collections and deposits shall provide for the name of the payor, so court where the case is to be filed and the amounts paid deposited to the corresponding 55 accounts. So the report, uh, that's why we uh, require you to issue official receipt kahit hindi pa nag-appear physically na support nyo yung party. So they, the, you can verify the payment using the Fortune Pay online portal. So you can see who paid the, the, the fees, then it issue the payer, and I repeat, the payer should be the one who's filing the case, the plaintiff. So the and the amounts you can verify the amounts if uh, it's the same with the assessment form that you issue. So verify nyo, you have you should have a another copy of the assessment form na binigay nyo sa party, and you have to verify the payments there. So if confirmed, okay, yung amount tali doon sa list ng uh, assessment form nyo. So then, the time you issue official receipt, then uh, official receipts for the five accounts, JDF, SAGE, LRF, VCF, and STF. So may question dito, what if may glitch yung system, yung program? So the party, nagbayad siya, then he screenshot his payment, and uh, may camera. Yung uh, ship the party provided you the proof of payment. And then, the when you verify the, the payment in the payment for, uh, Fortune Pay payment portal, hindi nyo makita, wala yung transaction doon. So, pwede ring mangyari yun. So, and uh, hindi nyo pa pwedeng idakit yung case. Pag ganun, hindi pa kayo pwedeng mag-issue ng official receipt. So, pag may ganyang case, and the party is insisting na valid yung payment niya, so, kasi may assumption tayo dyan, kung wala doon sa Fortune Pay, uh, sa list ng reports ng daily, pwedeng uh, tampered or hindi genuine yung proof of payment na pinapakita niya. Pero sa case na to, yung system ay may problema, hindi nag-appear dito sa list of collection. So, yung ganito, i-report nyo ngayon yan. Sa, may, sa email provided yan, so, Miss Kat displayed yung email ad or yung pwede nyo tawagan yung Fortune Pay ng help uh, desk nila to to answer. So, then uh, refer then, uh, you, you should inform then kami sa yung audit, then the OCA para to verify that transaction kung meron. So, ang question nyo kung kailang i-docket, hindi pa kayo pwede mag kung hindi pa verified yung payment at hindi pa kayo pwede mag-issue ng OR. So, mag issue kayo ng OR kung verified yung payment. So, that's that time na may jurisdiction na yung court nyo to docket yung case na pinafile sa inyo. Okay, yung list of collections, ang pag-issue ng OR, ang gagamitin nyo, you'll use the daily collections and deposits. So, you have going to print that. So, mabibuyo nyo doon sa, sa window ng transaction or sa reports, yung daily 
print individual dapat issuance of OR should be supported with an individual report of collections and deposits so yun yung requirement ng financial management office so para ito take up nyo i attach nyo sa financial monthly report Number 13, all payments, deposits made through the Fortune Pay, Pay mobile uh, application shall be reported and reflected in the monthly financial reports that are required to be submitted to the accounting division, FMO OCA. So the duplicate copies of the ORs issued and the proof of payment deposit, uh, the one I mentioned in daily report, shall be attached to the report. So the proof of payment or deposit shall be stamped deposit verified by the concerned COC. So, ito pa yung additional requirement. So, dapat uh, in-stamp nyo siya as deposit verified. So, dalawa na yung stamp na ipoprovide nyo dapat. Yung erroneous deposit and deposit verified. I-stamp nyo to doon sa proof of payment na sinabmit ng party. So, yung may glitch na hindi na verify pa. So, stand by yun. So, until ma-confirm ng fortune pay na pumasok talaga yon yung payment. So, kung pupasok naman kasi yon mag appear na dapat yun doon sa list of collections. Okay. So, a, a, a copy of the proof of payment shall be retained and properly filed with the court concerned for financial audit purposes. So, that required yan. So, yung audit team, i-check yan. So, we, you should have an, another copy for the proof of payment yung i-attach nyo sa file copy ng monthly report nyo for audit purposes. For proper guidance, all COCs uh, acting clerks of courts are directed to post printed instruction to avail of the option for e-payment through portion pay. So, isa to sa requirement. So, with their payment, yung ipopost sa bulletin boards, may notice sa public. So, in English uh, or in the local dialect ng place nyo. So meron kaming uh, meron akong kinuhang example dito so I ask the permission of the court concerned so ito pwede niyo gayahin so yung uh, MTCC Kabanatuan the uh, printed dito yung tarp so mas malaki to sa normal size ng band paper so naka yan doon sa window nila so yung instruction how to use the fortune pay app nandoon yung QR code so you can copy this. So Tagalog ang ginawa niya. So, so pwede sa sa Visayas, pwedeng Visayan language, so sa inyo pwede niyo gawin 'yon. So or may English or may Tagalog or Visayan language. So na maintindihan ng party para magamit nila yung Fortune Pay. So be careful kayo sa mga QR code. Dapat lagi niyo na check yung QR code. Kung genuine pa ba yung QR code niya, baka ibang QR code na may naggaya na ng QR code ng Fortune Pay sa ibang account na pumapasok yung payment. Dapat hindi na tatamper din yung QR code. So, di, pwede nyo pong uh, gayahin tong uh, notice na to sa public. So, required to, dapat makikita din ng audit team na may ganito kayo pag na-check yung, yung court nyo. So, dapat may notice. So, yung part 3 about the opening of STF accounts. So, required kasi yung may STF account para mag-activate yung Fortune Pay uh, portal nyo, yung username. So, yung mga courts na wala pang STF account, hindi pa nila magagamit yung user login credentials nila doon sa payment, uh, Fortune Pay payment or, or online portal. So, kaya nung uh, nirequire to, one sa last number nung circular, we provided a registration form. So, entitled yung Electronic Payment Solution of the Court. So, ito in preparation to doon sa sa nationwide uh, implementation ng online payment yung the attorney Sherwin we mentioned earlier no yung digitization ng court na automated na lahat so yung pag uh, assess pag issue ng OR pag generate ng reports make automatic computation agad pag uh, magpa-file yung party pasok sila sa, sa sa system sa sa website so the assessment form shall be provided automatically automated assessment form so, yun. so we provided this uh, MS form, so we required the courts to accomplish this. Dito nyo ilalagay kasi kung may STF accounts kayo or wala. So, kung wala kayong STF accounts, ilalagay nyo. So, you should put kung 
may collection ba kayo ng STF? Magkano yung collection nyo ng STF? So yung mga nakita ko dito nag-fill up, walang STF account pero mga 100,000 na sa 700,000 yung pera ng STF. So why you're not maintaining a separate STF account? Ang sabi nila, naka-incorporate sa fiduciary fund account. So hindi po pwedeng incorporate ang, ang STF sa FIDU. Dapat may separate STF account kayo. So ang yung nakita namin na minimal talaga yung collection for STF, yun, we're, we're thinking of a way na ma support o ma-assist yung court na ganun in opening their account. So, yung we're going to issue a circular mandating the opening of bank accounts sa inyo sa lower courts. So, optional yon kung gusto nyo yung savings account or current account. Although, we suggest na current account kung kaya naman ng maintaining balance nyo. So, the current account, the minimum requirement is 30,000 pesos for uh, corporate current account. And doon sa savings, regular savings is 10,000 for regular savings. Pero we have a memorandum of agreement with the land bank dyan. So, hindi na 10,000. If you're going to open a savings account sa land bank, 1,000 lang yung maintaining balance natin. So, kung may mga limited collection dyan, uh, yung, ipakita nyo, you have to present doon sa land bank yung ating uh, OCA circular. That is 99-2014. So, yung land bank, uh, some of the branches of the land bank, hindi sila aware doon sa MOA natin. Kaya yung ibang nag-open, nire-require ng 10,000. So, the, yung ibang drugs of course, hindi rin alam na may MOA tayo. So, dapat uh, tandaan nyo, yung OCA Circular 99-2014. Yun yung uh, ating sinircularize yung memorandum of agreement natin with the land bank na pwede tayong mag-open ng savings account na below uh, na 1,000 pesos lang yung maintaining balance. Okay? Itong electronic payments na MS4 na ginawa namin sa FMD, so nirequire pati namin yung second level course dito to accomplish eh. So, hindi pa rin. So, mga as of yesterday, 794 lang yung nag-respond. So, ang ina-expect natin kasi we have 1,300 uh, single sala and OCC courts for first level and second level. Yung second level is 294. Uh, yung yung uh, the first level 1006 so 651 pa lang yung nag-accomplish nito so we we need this the information here para makapag-issue kami ng circular kung sino ba yung kailangang i-assist ng court na sagutin yung maintaining balance kung talagang walang collection na mag-open ng uh, STF account so kaya importante yung link na yan, so provided yung link dito, kung you, those courts or correct supports na hindi pa nag-accomplish ng form, kailangan yung data. So, nag uh, a mispat na she talk, na kausap niya yung isa sa officer ng land bank na pinapayagan niya tayong mag-open ng land bank accounts na to follow yung uh, maintaining balance, yung pera. So, kung yung mga yun, so before that, dapat ma-completo ma muna namin yung details dito para we can identify yung courts na wala talagang STF account. So, ang sa record namin, 129 uh, first level courts ang walang STF account. That includes yung Sharia courts ng 16 Sharia courts. So, 129. So, mga 113 regular courts, yun yung mga may small claims cases na kailangan mag-i-open ang STF account. So, sa so 130 na yon, we need the data kung meron ba kayong collection ng STF. Okay? Yung courts na malayo, so namumroblema kayo, so compulsory na kailangan magkaroon uh, ng land bank account, ng bank account, so not necessarily land bank account. So, yung courts na wala talagang land bank, malayo sa land bank, so, pero merong authorized depository bank dyan. So, merong kaming draft circular prepared. Pag in ni court ad yun, na pwede kayong mag-open sa other authorized government depository bank. And I, I asked the fortune pay kung wala bang problema kung nasa uh, like development bank of the Philippines. So, pag nag-audit kami sa Mindanao, marami kami nakikita. Katabi lang ng court yung DBP, walang land bank. So, yun yung uh, isa number one sa list na pinurvide namin ng Authorized Government Depository Bank in case na walang branch, land bank branch doon sa lugar. So, we will allow courts to open 
their accounts doon sa DBP. So second option, yung Veterans Bank or third, yung United Coconut Planters Bank. So tatlo yung nire-recommend namin. So pag in yan, so pwede nang mag-open. Pero pag sa DBP kayo nag-open, wala tayong mawa sa DBP. So 10,000 ang maintaining balance for savings account and 30,000 for corporate checking account. So, and uh, we're uh, finalizing the guidelines there. So we, uh, with Akako, Akalilian ko, and Attorney Hilda Sumpo. So Attorney Hilda is here with us. Kung may query kayo, so she can answer uh, the query about doon sa STF accounts, opening, and the financial reports. Okay, so yung purpose nito, yung collection ng data nito, ito yung uh, yung big picture na sinasabi ni Attorney Sherwin na digitization ng court. So we are in the process of developing a system na talagang online payment na. So lahat, kasama pati yung mga appellate courts dito. So Supreme Court. So ang, ang, ang uh, transaction dito, so all cases, so lahat ng real action, nandiyan yung small claims, BP, 22, so mga criminal cases with civil actions, so other civil cases. So lahat ng cases na to, dadaan dito. So i-access sa program, so ang pagpasok dyan may automated computation na. So may assessment form na ibibigay sa party. So pag nakita ng party yung assessment na, may button doon to proceed payment. Pag nag, uh, pwede siyang mag-online payment doon, and bank transfer, other payments. So, ang pwedeng kung may union bank account kayo or land bank account, so pwede nyo gamitin yun. So, kung online payment, ang other channels, like yung Fortune Pay, ito. So, pwede nyo rin gamitin to doon sa online payment. So, yung system na itong gine-develop ng Fortune Pay, will be incorporated dito sa system na ginagawa para sa buong judiciary. So, you can pay this one like yung other option, yung Instapay or PesoNet. So, kung yung other uh, online payment, kung makikipag uh, uh, memorandum agreement sa Supreme Court, may sasama din dito. Okay? So, computerized na rin yung official issuance ng official receipts dito. So, yun yung gusto rin. Favorable to sa amin sa audit. Madali na lahat mag-verify. So, may audit trails na to, computer audit trails, makaka, we can generate reports, the list of collections. So, after na pumasok sa system yan, ang isa sa maganda sa system, so makaka-generate ng computerized financial reports. So, hindi na kayo kailangan magawa monthly, manually ng mga cash register register, cash disbursement register. So, it will, the system will provide yan. Ipiprint nyo na lang yun. So, ito yung big picture nung kaya kailangan namin ng data you should we need the cooperation of the clerks of courts kapag may naghihingi uh, kami ng data so i-accomplish yung mga uh, forms na pinoprovide namin okay so yun nga kung may queries kayo yung email ad yung epayment at judiciary.gov.ph so kung uh, we're requiring you, please provide your respective region para ma-answer ma din namin kung anong region. So, you get put the subject doon sa kung anong region. So, region 1, uh, ilagay nyo po dito sa subject uh, line, email subject line. Okay? So, kung may question, doon na lang po sa open forum. Okay, back to you, Miss Pat. Ayan, maraming salamat po, Sir Dexter Ilagan from the Court Management Office. I think um, medyo mas na-clarify pa ng mas mainam yung ating mga questions about uh, the e-payment process, you know, with what Sir Dexter discussed. So I can see talaga sa ating Q&A na we have a lot of questions. But before we go to the open forum, I uh, would like to go to our live poll number four. Ayan. Uh, pa-share na lang po ng uh, PowerPoint, please, Sir Darwin. So, sa live poll number four, we are asking whether or not you're ready for e-payment. Do you feel ready? <laughs> okay. Uh, please scan the QR code. Let me also send uh, the link. Ayan, ho, I hope everybody are accessing it right now. So... Ayan, maraming salamat po sa mga actively na nagpa-participate. So, pinakamarami nag-participate ate, live poll number 2, yung 1075 responses. 
setting live poll number three, only 832 responded. Is this an internet issue? I hope so. But once ready na ulit kayo, you can uh, try to access it again via the link. And right now we are flashing the QR code for live poll number four. So and we are populating responses. So siguro at this juncture, um, we can have a health break na medyo mahaba-haba. So mga siguro, let's give 10 minutes before we do the Q&A. So it's 11.17, so mga 11.27, balik kayo ha. Pero syempre gawin nyo muna yung poll. Kasi seryoso, i-check po yan for the attendance. I saw some questions about a uh, recommendation for QR code scanner app. I really don't have one because I use the one in in my iPhone. But um, that I used to use, I used to access the Viber scanner. So Viber may scanner yun eh. Uh -huh. Yeah, Viber. You can try. Click nyo yun, di ba? When you open Viber, you click more. Pag click nyo ng more, merong QR code kang makikita sa taas. Sa upper right. Yan. Click nyo yun and then open yung scanner niya. Ayan. So, we have 249 responses. Guys, ha? <laughs> to our dear court personnel, please don't uh, forgo the live poll. Ayan. So, siguro internet issue lang talaga. Akala ko, ayun yun na mag-live poll. <laughs> so, that's 345. Okay, it's climbing. Thank you very much sa mga nag-fill out na. So, I was publishing some of the common questions, no? We're trying to answer it kasi medyo common yung mga tanong. Like, uh, is Fortune Pay like Gcash? Yes, definitely. It's like Gcash. Will we give you a video copy of this webinar? Yes. This webinar is being recorded. And oh yeah, I would like to acknowledge the presence of our assistant court administrator, uh, Ma'am Lillian. Hello po. And of course, Attorney Hilda. Also a very common question, no? Um, what if they have no smart, yung court litigant uh, has no smartphone or for rural areas wherein there is really no reliable internet connection, you're asking if uh, the party can still personally pay or if the party can forgo the e-payment. The answer is yes, they can forgo and then they can also personally uh, pay sa court. Uh, because uh, e-payment is only an additional mode of payment. So it's 11.20. And we have 651 responses and climbing. Okay, so we have uh, almost a thousand responses na sa number four. Wow, thank you very much. So yung mga tapos na, it's your time to... Take a very quick uh, health break. You can go. It's 11.21, so I'm sure some of you are hungry. Pwede na po tayong kumain ng onte, like a snack, siguro. So hello po siguro sa aking mga kababayan mula sa Bicol. <laughs> Someone message here from Masbate. Acknowledging lang po. Because they have a brown out right now, so. Julie, no. Pa. Kaya pala, beauty queen ka, Miss Pat, you're from Bicol. <laughs> Sir Dexter talaga minubukin ako. But yeah, hello po sa aking mga kababayan from Bicol. Lalo na po sa Albay. And of course, no worries, no? Kapag hindi tayo nakapag, masyadong nakapag-follow sa webinar, Yung ano naman po kasi, uh, we have a recording of this webinar, so. Eh, may mga tanong tayo about QR code later on, no? Let's, uh, let's see from 
our speakers. So, kanina na discuss din po yung QR code. Yeah. Also, don't worry, we, we will be sending a manual. And some uh, frequently asked questions to guide our court personnel. And so, it's 11.23. Yeah, so, we have three minutes left. So for our dear attendees, no? Medyo nagpa-fluctuate yung attendees natin. Kanina 1,090-something na siya. But siguro I guess the internet really is very slow in some areas here in the Philippines. So right now we have 1,048 attendees. Ayan. So we are back. Ladies and gentlemen, it's 11.27 a.m. I hope that everybody are finished with accomplishing our live calls number two, three, and four. Sana tapos na po kayo and I hope that everybody is back from their health break. Now, I will be uh, sharing uh, the answers for our live call. So, yung, siguro i-request ko na rin, no, Sir Vince, na i-close na natin yung calls. Once nag start na ako mag discuss para yung hahabol habol pero ito live poll number two siguro pa close na natin yung access for our uh, attendees so discussing the answers lang no ano ah, pansin ko din to guys so siguro it's really just uh, a glitch kasi some people are uh, inputting variations for the answer in number one so okay na sa live poll number two uh, Paul tayo. So, it's how well do you know the e-payment process? So, for number one, the question is that the blank will be issued to the payer upon verification of the payment through the Fortune Pay online portal. So, the correct answer is official receipt. Ayan. So, marami naman naka, ano, nakasagot ng maayos or nakatama. Siguro we just have to address, no? It's not assessment. Some people kasi I think uh, thought it's the assessment. Lapitan ko pa para makita nyo talaga. Ayan. So assessment, uh, this is not correct ha. You do not uh, issue the assessment form upon verification. Upon verification, ang tamang sagot, uh, you will issue the official receipt. So, thank you very much and congrats mga nakatama. And then number two, the corresponding QR code for each court station is not required to be posted in the payment windows or bulletin boards of the court. So, ang tamang sagot ay false. Yan. Totoo. It's, it's required. Ang totoo is it's required. Yan. So, hindi totoo na it's not required. Alright, so number three, the payer is required to provide the blank to the clerk of court or assisting clerk of court to verify the payment. Correct answer is a screenshot of transaction ID. Ayan. So, yung mga ibang sumagot ha, um, assessment form, incorrect, payment details, incorrect. Hindi pwede yun. dapat screenshot of the transaction ID. And last question, to select the court station they wish to pay under, payers can use the Fortune Pay mobile application to either manually browse the application or scan the corresponding QR code. Yun ang tamang sagot. So, dapat both of the above choices. So, to our 26 attendees and 398 attendees na, nagsa na nag-select ng either, dapat both. And to the 60 na nagsabing none of the above, both po. <laughs> Alright. So, now let's go to the next form. For live poll number three, do you know your way around the Fortune Pay online portal? We have uh, 1104 responses. 
And here are the answers. So, number one, the tanong, branch administrators have the permission to do the following except. So, medyo siguro kailangan natin, Sir Dexter, ng konting clarification about branch permissions. Actually, the ano, branch administrators actually refer to court ad, uh, court station administrators kanina. Y yan yung sa Supreme Court administrators? Admin? This is for the court station. Court station. Yes. Uh, okay. So tama, no? Uh, ang hindi nila pwedeng gawin is to add auditors. Pero for the court station administrators, they have the permission to add branch users, view branch transactions, and settlement history. They can also generate branch or court station reports. Yes, correct. So, siguro yung mga nag-press ng none of the above na confused lang kasi bakit branch administrators, no? So, actually, branch also refers to court station administrators here. Pero moving forward, no, uh, that should be court station administrators. They changed it to station administrators na yata. Station administrators. Station administrators. All right. And then number two, cut off time for settlement of transactions with land bank will be at so, siguro yung iba medyo na confused, but ang tamang sagot kasi is none of the above because it should be at 6 p.m. Okay. Next question: Under which tab will you find the option to generate the QR code for the queue for the court station? Ayan. So, marami siguro parin na ko confused. Marami ako nakikita ng question about QR code. So, daan din natin to mamaya sir Dexter. Uh, na wakikita po siya sa business profile. Hindi po sa dashboard or sa transactions and reports tab. And the next pod, uh, question, next question is the court can monitor real time transactions and can immediately check all their transactions. True or false? The correct answer is true. That but real time because you need to be able to check the validity of the transaction. And then uh, number five, the Fortune Pay online portal can also be accessed through your smartphone. True or false? Actually, sagot talaga dito is true. Uh, but ang recommended uh, platform talaga is to access it through your desktop or laptop. Kasi mas, uh, mas easier and mas uh, mag-work siya compared sa smartphone. And our last uh, form, no? live poll number four, quiz, are you ready for e-payments? <laughs> So, ayan, actually, kay Sir Dexter galing to. So, uh, first question, OCA Circular Number 102-2021 did not repeal OCA Circular Number 164-2020. True or false? Answer is true. Na-discuss yun kayo ni Sir Dexter. Number two, issuance of assessment form to the party if the latter wants to use the Fortune Pay mobile app in the payment of legal fees and sheriff's trust fund. Totoo ba to? The answer is true. You need to issue the assessment form if you want to use e-payment. Number three, a list of collection and deposit should be generated from the Fortune Pay online portal or the FPOP per transaction as a supporting document for the issuance of the corresponding official receipts. Of course, this is true. Next, issuance of official receipts should be done upon verification of payment in the FPOP and not on the physical appearance of the party. And the answer is true. Paano, how do you verify? No, kung may nagtatanong lang, as discussed earlier, present the screenshot, compare, and check with the FPOP. Number five, last question. Erroneous payment using the Fortune Pay mobile app shall be refunded to the party. And the correct answer is true. We do have a refund process. Ayan. So, 
Parang nahuli to sa responses, no? 957 lang siya. Ah, yan na, 1042 na. <laughs> Alright, so maraming salamat po to all our court personnel. I hope you also had uh, a little bit of fun with doing our live calls. May isa na lang tayong live call later before uh, we uh, fully end our webinar. But now, um, we will now go to our open forum to discuss uh, the questions that you have for our uh, e-payment process. So, may I request for our uh, team to also share. Siguro pakita na rin natin sila, Sir Dexter. Uh, may I ask uh, Ms. Kathleen, Gabby, and Sir Dexter to open your cameras. Ayan, and be ready for the questions. So, may mga tanong tayo dito, no? May tanong about the assessment form. Uh, Pa-confirm na lang, uh, Sir Dexter, that there is a template and the template will be forwarded to the courts. Meron na ba yan ng template? Uh, yes, yes, Ms. Pat. So, we're going to send that template there in the MS Teams region and through uh, email, email okay. provided doon sa mga team leaders per region. Alright, thank you, Sir Dexter. And ito para kay Ms. Kath, uh, tungkol doon sa cash-in o pag-load ng money sa loob ng e-wallet apps, wala pong available na BPI or 7-Eleven sa kanilang area or kahit yung mga affiliate remittance center ng Fortune Pay ay hindi available sa kanila. Ano po ang gagawin uh, nila sa court station? Babalik po ba kami sa manual na proseso kung saan physical cash po ang tatanggapin ng court para po sa filing fees? So, doon muna po tayo, uh, Ms. Kath, sa paano pag wala silang uh, mga available na BPI or 7-Eleven outlets or other remittance center. Ma'am, uh, may ask po kung ano pong available sa kanila malapit. Mm. Uh, um, like, liblib po ba yung area? Okay, so I just published this. So, yung nagtanong po, uh, paki-clarify na lang po kung uh, wala ba talagang other uh, na pinakamalapit na pwede nilang mapuntahan. So, babalikan natin to. Alright, uh, next. Sabihin na lang natin kung ano yung mga option na pwede mag-cash in. Pinakita na nila eh, pero kanina. Pero sabi ni, ni court personnel, parang wala daw sila nakikita na malapit sa kanila at that moment. Pwede ba na yung malaman kung saan to? <laughs> na walang malapit na, ano, na any remittance center. Sige pa. Or 7-Eleven. Wow, meron pa po walang mga lugar na walang 7-Eleven. Okay, so may mga cell phones po kasi na Huawei at wala yung Fortune Pay sa Google. Yung, yung Pay. other question nga, nun sa required ba? Di ba may sinabi siyang required kung wala, kung pwedeng mag-manual? Yung related question doon sa... Uh, yeah, uh, I think we said this already earlier, no? It, it's allowed to pay manually kasi it's only an additional payment option. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay, so uh, Miss Erdi, I'm Miss Kathleen, no? Uh, yung ibang phones like Huawei, they don't have uh, Google Play. Uh, Paano daw yung workaround for the download? For Huawei use, workaround na po kami dyan para sa, ano, sa Huawei phones po. Kasi yun nga po, meron tayong mga issues doon na wala sa Google Play po. So ano po yung workaround? For this one, ma'am, ang alternative po talaga natin is uh, uh, other Android phones po and yung mga iOS phone. O yung iOS phone po. Ah, okay. Actually, sana yung i-flash natin sa screen, no, Sir Darwin, kung pwede si Ma'am Kathleen na lang sa si Sir Dexter para nakikita naman nila. Makakala ng mga ating court personnel na freeze na naman yung presentation. Sige, thank so, you. When yun, kung sa Huawei, kailan magiging available sa Huawei? Ms. Kat, kailan daw po magiging available yung sa Huawei?
the team and get back to you. So, Sige ma'am, i-risk ko po, ito consult ko po yung team kung uh, kano yung ano natin, um, timeline po natin for that. Ah, uh, okay. Okay, so marami nga nagtanong nun. And then, ito, may question sila, can the litigants use other account name under Fortune Pay to pay for small claims? So I guess, you're asking kung pwede yung siguro account ng ibang tao, pinambayad nila for for their claim. Is that allowed? Sir Dex? <laughs> no. Uh, bawal yun. So nandun yun sa 164-2020. Personal account lang nung yung party litigant yun. So we're, we're discouraging muna yung mga mga business na magpasok sa atin kasi doon prone kasi sa falsification yung ganun. Also, I think some uh, court users are, or court personnel are asking, no, like, are we to use our personal mobile number in accessing Fortune Pay? Well, actually, po, kaya din namin pina download yung Fortune Pay mobile application. It's uh, for the uh, personnel to familiarize themselves with the application. But yung totoo, yu kailangan yung lang po talagang i access, you know, as court personnel is the Fortune Pay online portal or the FPOP, uh, yung mobile app is actually on the part of the payors or the litigants. So uh, you're free to use uh, your personal mobile number for that, pero hindi siya requirement uh, as court personnel. So magkahiwalay po yung purpose natin for downloading the, for the request uh, for today's webinar for you to download the Fortune Pay mobile app and to access the online portal. So I guess uh, yung iba mga tanong dito no, ang tanong kasi log in using username in the app papaano daw because it only requires contact number. Again, the log the login credentials that were sent to you, the username and the password should only be used for the portal and not for the application. So some people are saying, Sir Dex, that they cannot access the FPOP because they haven't received their username and password yet. So yeah. okay, so I, uh, send na lang yung details kung sino sila in court station. So our audit team leaders uh, are here also. They can provide them the username. Okay, po. So so for everyone who are here at the moment, please note that na send na po namin yung username and password. If you have not received that, uh, please email us dun sa pinakita ni Sir Dexter kanina na e-payment at judiciary.se.gov na email. Okay, good question. In cases po where there is a glitch, what happens to the payment? What happens to the case before the payment of filing fees? Uh, will... Uh, Sorry, can I, can I read that again? What happens to the case because the payment of filing fees allow the court to acquire jurisdiction over the case? So, ano mangyayari to dito, Sir Dex? Uh, I answered that kanina doon sa presentation, nung sa part 2. So, kung ganon, yung glitch na sinasabi nila, maybe hindi pumasok doon sa Fortune Pay, Pay online payment portal. So, pero mayroong proof ang party na nagbayad siya. May transaction ID siyang na screenshot. So, nung pinapakita sa court, uh, clerk of court, nagbayad siya. Pero nung binibarify ng clerk of court, wala doon sa system. So, pwedeng mangyari yun, Miss Kat, no? Wala. So, yun yung glitch. So, pwede, hindi pa pwedeng i-dacket ng court. Hindi pa pwedeng mag-issue ang court ng OR kasi hindi pa verified yung transaction na yun. So, i-refer na, dapat mag uh, i-refer nila yung problema din sa uh, Fortune Pay, then sa atin, para ma-verify yung transaction, kung valid ba yung transaction. Okay, thank you, Sir Dexter. So, next is, what if madalas offline ang machine sa 7-Eleven? Saan pa po pwede mag-cash in? Ma'am Kat? Hi, Miss Pat. For that one, ma'am, since uh, yung, yung uh, offline po is yung click kiosk, tama po? So, meron yes. naman din po tayong click queue app. So, pwede din po siya dun i-process. And yun po yung i-present natin sa cashier po ni 7-Eleven. Sa cashier na lang, okay. So, I guess i-include na lang din ito sa ating ano, no? uh, FAQs. Ay, sige po. Kapadala sa kanila. Okay. Medyo repeating yung mga questions natin. Okay. 
Good question. Uh, Sir Dexter, can we use fortune pay for other payments? Court clearance, motion for postponement. Pwede yun. So, yun yung nasa OCA Circle 164-2020. Kaya lang, ang pagbayad nila, diretso sa fiduciary fund account lahat yun. Yung fund na involved, kung sa clearances, JDF and Sarge, papasok siya doon sa may LRF pa na 10 pesos. Tatlong funds ang papasokan doon. Pero sa FIDO, idediretso. So, yun nga, kung ma second phase ng fortune pay, kung makakapag-provide kayo nung sa other cases, mas maganda. May option sila na magbayad diretso na sa account. Pero ngayon, hindi pa small claims pa lang yung, yung directly tra transferring doon sa respective accounts. Eh. Okay. I'm not sure if the answer to kanina, no, Sir Dex, pero on request for refund of erroneous payment, did, does, do the court who received the payment have to issue separate receipts on each fund? Thank you. No, yeah, per fund yung issuance ng official receipt. So, pag na-verify nyo, yung five accounts na yun. So, in, individually yung pag-issue ng official receipt. So, five official receipts to, no? Na kailangan nila for the refund, if ever. Uh, yes, yes, Ms. Pata. Kung yung refund, ang pwede lang i-refund natin ng court, yung JDF and SADS. So, yung LRF, BCF, LRF sa UP nila i-request yun. Yung Victims Compensation Fund sa DOJ. So, ang may refund lang natin, yung dineposit nila sa JDF and SADS. And STF. Next question for Ma'am Kat. No? The QR code that was posted on the bulletin board of their court is not accessible. So the Fortune Pay app uh, says, no, when they scan, that uh, the QR code is not a valid FPQR. Mm. Uh, ito po yung uh, na-mention natin uh, yesterday, ma'am. So baka yung ginagamit niya pong pang QR is yung nasa dashboard po ng um, Fortune Pay app. Mm. Ang kailangan nilang gamitin is they have to go through government app uh, payments and then court key payment po. Ah, uh, okay. So baka nagkakamali po tayo ng dinadownload na QR code. So kanina diniscuss ni Ms. Kat yung proper way to generate your QR code. Uh, may mga pagkakataon lang na misa hindi siya nagpa-pop up. Siguro it's a system error. You can try again. Pero we advise na once you are able to at maganda ang internet connection, uh, i-download nyo na siya agad kasi hindi naman nagbabago yung QR code yes, for each station. Alright. So, pag ganun po yung nangyayari, invalid, punta lang po ulit tayo sa uh, business profile tab as discussed, uh, na-mention na rin siya kanina sa quiz. And then, mag-generate na lang po tayo ulit ng bagong QR code. And of course, before you post it sa bulletin, i-check po natin muna. Gami, kaya po pinapadownload namin yung Fortune Pay mobile app para ma-check nyo din yung mga ganyang aspects. Okay. So nasagot na yung mga questions if pwedeng uh, cash payment sa cashier. Pwede po yun. Mm -hmm. Ako pwede ako magtanong pala. So yung related sa question yung kung pwedeng gamitin yung fortune pay kung sa ibang cases. So may option naman doon ng bank transfer, di ba? Yung sa, sa fortune pay. Meron ba tayong... Uh, option doon, Ms. Kat? Yes po, sir. Meron po. Ah, so, yun. Yung pwede. Pwede gamitin yung fortune pay sa pag payment online pero following o kasi yung 164 2020. Siguro, no? Baka may mga na late. Kasi dami nagtatanong about loading, FP. Pwede ba, Ms. Kat? Pa-share na lang naman ulit ako nung uh, providers yung pwede yung pang-load sa fortune pay. Yung pinakita nyo kanina para lang makita ulit nila kasi parang may mga na late lang siguro kasi that's the first part of our discussion. Sige, pa-flash na lang po. Ay sige, pa mamit lang po. Siguro Sir Dexter, ulitin natin yung roles and permission. Kasi parang marami nang nagtatanong. Sa user accounts? Yes po. Okay. Mm -mm. Yung miskat, yung uh, uh, capabilities ng station 
administrator. So yung sabi ni Ms. Kat, uh, pwede kayong mag-add ng user. So yung clerk of court, pwede niyang i-add yung cash clerk niya or uh, yung cash cashier or yung assisting collecting personnel. So pag uh, pagbe-verify doon sa uh, Fortune Pay online payment, pero hindi kayo pe, hindi niyo pwedeng ma-remove 'yon. So hindi rin kayo pwedeng mag yung in inactive siya. So yung admin lang dito sa sa amin sa so Supreme Court si Miss Bing sa MISO office ang pwedeng mag disable nung user or inactive uh, gawing inactive siya. Okay. Thank you sir Dex. So may mga questions tayo about changing the password, no? Uh for password concerns, uh, pag, pag yung kunyari nagkamali kayo sa reset, binago nyo yung password, tas di na kayo makapasok ulit, email na lang po tayo sa e-payment, uh, official email natin, e-payment as at judiciary.gov.ph. Kasi kailangan po ng ano yun eh, uh, particular na sagot. So ayan, fina-flash na ni Miss Kathleen yung options natin for cash in and cash out with Fortune Pay, no? So, i-check nyo na lang po yan. Yung minention niya kanina na pwede ng offline ang 7-Eleven, yung click. Tama, no, Miss Cass? Yes po. Meron po silang click queue machine and meron din po silang click queue app. Yeah. And you can do that offline, hindi ka lang na internet. Tama, Ma'am Cass? Uh, for the click queue app po, kailangan po ng internet po. Alin yung hindi kailangan ng internet? Kasi yun yung tanong nila. Uh, sa click you machine po yun, ma'am, sa 7-Eleven uh, outlets. So, the actual machine sa loob ng 7-Eleven. Alright. Hi, Attorney Pat. Hello, EJ. Morning. Um, for the, the machine, po, because we also noticed that every um, there's instances where it goes offline, so we also found a workaround for the app on, on the app side for the users to utilize that segment also in the event that the, system, the machine is not working well. Mm, so, include na lang siguro natin to sa ating uh, manual or FAQ sa sige. Yes, okay, next question. Why po sa small claims lang? How about sa civil case po? Sir Dexter. <laughs> si, si Attorney Sherwin. <laughs> Sagot nito. <laughs> si Attorney Sherwin. I'm not sure if he's back, pero he got called kasi kay Chief uh, Justice. So, Ah, uh, yung yung system kasi naka-define muna sa five accounts. So, pag kinli kasi small claims, automatically ibibigay niya yung five accounts na wala kasing mediation fund yun. Yung pinakamabilis kasi muna yung ginamit natin na so file. So, dadating tayo if the Fortune Pay develop a system na magpo-provide ng la, ibang cases diyan. So, magsasuggest kami ng mga other cases na usually na ipa-file sa court. Like sa BP22 cases din sa first level. So, yun yung mga useful link na file, pwedeng idagdag. So, instead na five accounts, may ah, six accounts nang ipoprovide. So, input lang. So, madali lang sa fortune pay yun, no? Miss Kat? Yes po, sir. Yes po. Ah, okay. Okay. Miss Kat, oh, okay na po yan na uh, uh, flinash ninyo. Pa-flash naman ako ulit ng QR code generation para lang din makita ulit nila. Tapos, while that is happening, uh, Sir Dexter, question. Same process pa din po ba STF? Yung withdrawal of travel expense funds para magamit ng server. Yes, uh, same pa rin. Yung kailangan mag-cash advance, i-approve ng presiding judge yung cash advance. Then kung magkano yung in-approve. Pero yung sinasabi namin, dapat may approve uniform fare matrix na kayo. Required yun. No? May OCA circular din tayo, yung 263-2018. So, three years ago pa yon dapat may uniform fare matrix na yung code station nyo. So, pag, kung ano yung amount prescribed doon sa pagsiserve kung saan area papunta, yun yung ilalagay nyo doon sa cash advance nyo, sa liquidation, so no need for any supporting documents doon. If the prescribed fee or fare na ginamit nyo, uh, complying doon sa prescribed uniform fare matrix. So, approve ng executive judge nyo yun. mag approve So, hindi o ka mag approve So, i-notify nyo lang or kakapi furnish nyo kami ng approved fare matrix para i-check namin kung reasonable ba yung mga nilagay nyong amounts doon. So, kung wala namang kayong marireceive ng uh, comment doon sa auditors, so, if we find the rates reasonable, 
So approve yun. So you can use continue using the fair rates prescribed. So required po yun. Pag wala kayong ganon, audit findings yun. So pati EJ, mapapa-explain yun. Kasama kayong clerk of court. So violation ng circular po pag wala kayong uniform fair matrix at to. Okay, thank you, Sir Dexter. So, ayan, naka-flash po ulit ang ating uh, instructions, no? How to generate uh, the QR code. Uh, pupunta lang sa business profile tab. Pupunta kayo dun underneath uh, the column for detail. Kita nyo yung users. Tapos yung, ikiklik nyo lang po yung tatlong dot. And that should open up to your QR code. May nagtatanong may expiration. As said earlier, no, it doesn't change. So, uh, wala siyang expiration. As is siya. So, next question, no? Since Land Bank is one and a half hours travel from office, is it required that payment should be validated on the same day? Um, Sir Dex? <laughs> mm, yes. Uh, kung if they use, the party use the Fortune Pay mobile app, so, pwede nyo ma-verify online yun yung payment. No need to go. Uh, no need to go doon sa landmark, doon sa Fortune Pay online portal. So, kapag na-verify yung OR, ay uh, yung co payment, collection, so yun yung time na mag i na kayo ng official receipt. Then print the collections, yung list ng collections and deposits. Yung, yun yung magiging supporting document sa pag-issue ng OR. Okay. Eh, Sir Dex, considering that uh, they do not have wired internet connection yet uh, in their office, making the internet unreliable. Uh, will any delay in the recording of e-payment uh, be against the clerk of court? Yeah, uh, okay. pwede nating tawagin si Attorney Hilda. So, Attorney Hilda will answer that question. Attorney Hilda? Pag gano'n naman, so, maja-justify naman nila eh, kung valid yung reason, kung madidelay sila sa pagawa ng reports, yung cash receipts register, so they can uh, note na lang doon yung may problem o hindi walang internet, uh, mahina internet. Pero yung hindi na sabi nga ni Attorney Sherwin, yung internet connection, yung 5K, 5 communication allowance na nare-receive ng judges nyo, intended yun para sa pagpapakabit ng internet sa court station nyo. So hindi dapat uh, sinosolo ni judge nyo yun. So inform nyo yung judge, yung 5,000 monthly communication allowance, dapat mapalagyan ng internet connection yung court station nyo. So, yung pong may mga clerk support, some clerk support na sinasabi, kay judge lang na pupunta yung 5,000. So, inform nyo, may yung circular na para po sa internet connection ng, ng, ng court station. So, importante po dito sa online payment natin. So, konting time check, no? It's 12.02. So, siguro we can extend mga hanggang 12.15. Sorry po sa mga naghihintay, but... Uh, Another question, uh, Sir, Sir Dexter, but the 1K maintaining balance per agreement with the land bank applies only to savings account, not on current account, which is 10K according to land bank. How is that? Maintaining balance per savings account is 10K. Uh, yung, yung corporate, pag personal current account, 10, 10 din, pero ang corporate sabi nila 30K. Pero pag mag-open kayo ng savings, yun nga, 1,000 lang yung maintaining balance natin pag savings account. Hindi kasama sa MOA natin yung current account. Eh. Yung savings lang yung nabanggit namin before. Yun lang pinayagan ng landmark na pwedeng maging 1,000 maintaining balance. Okay, thank you po, Sir Dexter. And uh, sa mga nagtatanong, no, uh, this e-payment for small claims is only uh, the beginning. Kumbaga, this is actually a pilot test uh, for the e-payment uh, for the judiciary system, the whole judiciary system. So uh, you can uh, look forward that uh, as we go along, uh, the programs, uh, masasama na rin yung ibang court fees, hindi lang small claims cases. Alright, and next na tanong is how to enroll FP account in MCTC. So again, all of you are already enrolled. So you you need to have already your your login credentials, username and password. Kung wala pa po mag email po kayo sa amin. FT, what? F FT? FP, Fortune ah, FP, akala ko, fund transfer. Ah. So yung account natin ng ano, not allowed 
doon sa fund transfer yung account ng court. So, oh. uh, so hindi po allowed mag-transfer yung funds sa online. Oh. Okay, question po for Sir Dexter. With this mode of payment being used, what will be the basis of the date of filing of the small claims case? Upon receipt of the claims or upon complete payment of the fees using this mode of payment, considering that the case will only be docketed upon complete payment of the fees? Apo, yes, yung upon complete payment ng fee. So, nasa rule 141 yun. Hindi idadocket yung case unless yung legal fees fully paid. So, date ng full payment. Thank you, Sir Dex. Okay. Another question, Sir Dex. Let's say the balance of STF now can allow us to open an account with Land Bank. Because ours is incorporated with fiduciary, what if time comes that the balance will be below the maintaining balance kasi nga po na withdrawn na? What will they do? Hmm, yun. Uh, pero sa, na tingin namin, so continuous naman kasi yung filing ng civil cases. Eh. So, required yung payment ng uh, STF. So, kung maubos man, uh, yun lang, yung kailangang i-notify nyo yung office. So, dahil pwede kasi na sagutin or ng, ng OCA na sagutin yung maintaining balance. Pero dapat ma-inform nyo ahead para maka, magkaroon ng arrangement muna. Sa pag, uh, kasi pupundon pa yun ng OCA. Eh. So, kung may kailangang authority, so, yun nga, yung concern ni na attorney Hilda diyan sa pagpondo nung 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 STF account kung okay na si attorney Hilda pwede niya ring magdagdag si attorney Hilda sa sagot Hello Dex okay na okay ganun na. pa rin ah. Okay na Yes ma'am Oh iyano ko lang regarding sa STF um yung suggestion po kasi namin doon sa courts na maliliit lang yung collection so on the part ni clerk of court, kindly assess po kung kaya nyo mag-maintain ng current account. Otherwise, kung hindi po kaya mag-maintain ng current account, pwede naman po savings account. Kasi yun yung iniiwasan po natin. Pag hindi po ma-maintain ng court, halimbawa magkaroon ng madaming withdrawals, hindi ma-maintain yung maintaining balance, magkakaroon yan ng bank charges. So yun po yung iniiwasan natin. So for courts na maliit lang, minimal lang yung STF collections, we suggest na ang i-open instead is a savings account. Okay, thank you very much po, attorney. Opo, tapos doon po sa yung question kanina, yung sa pagsasubmit ng mga reports, um, hindi naman po siguro sobrang tatagal kasi yung requirement is to submit the report on or before the 10th day of the following month. So, halimbawa magkaroon man ng glitches, siguro hindi naman ganun masyadong tatagal. Kasi yun yung inaano namin, kaya nga yung isang na-require namin dyan is yung pagsasubmit ng mga reports via private courier. Kasi um, audit findings kasi yan, yung late na pag-take up ng financial report. So, as much as possible, we um, we require na yung ma-follow talaga yung period to submit yung mga financial reports. Okay po, attorney. Mm -mm, thank you. Thank you po. Hopefully, no, walang kaso na magkaroon ng internet blackout for a very long period of time. Pero uh, those will be extremely rare cases naman. Next question po, uh, Sir Dexter, siguro yung attorney Hilda. Um, if may magpa-file po ng small claims through Fortune Pay, paano po makakakuha ang court ng copy ng forms at supporting documents sa pagpa-file ng case? If nire-require po ng branch ang original signature sa mismong small claims form? Hmm, yung uh, kasi pinapayagan yung electronic uh, filing eh, so dati scan yung isasambit ng party kung di makapunta sa court yung electronic copy, scan copy, nandun yung signature. Pwede yun. Ah. O kung, kung hindi makakapunta personally yung party. Okay. Thank you, Sir Dex. I hope that clears that up. Tapos, another question, paano kung gagawing current account ang STF or fiduciary account? Saan or kanina po kukunin ang pambayad sa checkbook? Attorney G? Y yung sa 
cost ng checkbook, po pwede po inyo yun ma-request for reimbursement sa Finance Division of the Financial Management Office. Yung, yung uh, kung magpapalit from savings to current, so yung land bank usually yung branches, sinahanapan kayo ng authorization. Ah, ano pa pala, Dex? Oh, sorry. Um, for doon sa mag-change, una mag-change from, um, halimbawa, madami yung collection, so mag-change kayo from savings account to current account, or mag-open pa lang kayo ng STF account, whether savings or current account, kindly notify the revenue section so they could give you a copy of the authority from the Bureau of Treasury kasi isa yun sa requirement ni Land Bank. So pagpunta niyo sa Land Bank, dapat may dala na kayo noong copy ng authority na inisyu ni Bureau of Treasury. So inform niyo si Revenue Section para po mapadalan kayo kahit email, mabigyan kayo ng copy ng authority. Thank you. Yan. Thank you po, attorney. Next question no. Um how about if the payer is a juridic juridical entity so we issue an or in the name of the one who represented such entity or the name of the entity itself together with the name who represents the same sir dex mm, dun sa plaintiff ko kanina nakapangalan yung yung kaso dun yung ipapangalan yung or and yun yung name na nan dun dapat sa app yes yeah, so. In case of underpayment, is there a need to issue another assessment form, Sir Dex? Okay. Repeat the question, Ms. Pat. Ah, in case of underpayment, is there a need to issue another assessment form? Oh, yeah. So, attachment kasi yun doon sa, uh, sa OR collection mag-issue kung yun nga yung binanggit ko kanina kung kulang so issue another assessment kung JDEP lang so zero lahat yung four funds amount JDEP lang may amount so kailangan mag-issue pa ng assessment form okay pa so question din sir Dex if the court is not yet connected to the internet okay lang daw ba delayed implementation of e-payment Uh, kasi yung yung uh, ito naman hindi naman required eh so hindi na nagre-require yung party na mag-buy online so kung gusto lang yung nilang maging convenient sa pagbabayad so they can uh, choose yung this option yung fortune pay online payment pero kung yung ang ang party magbabayad online yun nga sabi ko sa 164 2020 so hindi sila pwedeng tumanggi. So the party has the option to choose kung gusto nilang online payment doon sa other mode na hindi cover itong small claims, yung pursuant doon sa 164-2020. So kung may ganung payment, kaya dapat naka-enroll na kayo sa we access So kung matatagal lang kayo sa pag-verify, so yun magiging problema nyo. Paano nyo madadakit yung case kung nag-online payment yung party? So, hindi natin masasagot yan. So, the judicial issue yan. Pwede kayo mareklamo, hindi nyo na-actionan yung case. So, dapat hindi natin laging excuse na walang internet connection. Thank you, Sir Dex. Ngayon, another question po. Whether LBP or Banco or Fortune Pay, gagawan pa rin po ba ng order of payment para sa clients? Hindi na. So, yun ang assessment form. Ito na yun. So, we're planning uh, to clarify yung sa eight, OCA Circular 89-2021 issued. Ang order of payment required to para sa branches, para mag direct yung party magbayad sa OCC. So, pag yung sa OCC, dapat, or single sala courts, assessment, um, assessment form ang i-issue nila sa party sa pagbabayad. So, yun yung circular na issue natin. Uh, including yung new form for legal fees form para maklarify yung mga queries ng lower courts regarding sa order of payment and assessment form. So, hindi na kailangan ng order of payment kung single sala yan or uh, OCC. So, yung assessment form na lang issue nila sa party. Sir Dex, clerk of court lang ba talaga ang authorized mag-compute at gumawa ng assessment form? 
No, hindi nga. Yung kaya nga doon sa baba, ang nakalagay, assessed by, kahit yung cashier or collecting personnel ang nakalagay doon. So, ang sinasabi lang natin doon, dapat reviewed din ng clerk of court yun. Alam na tama ba yung ginagawang pag-compute nung cashier or cash clerk niya. So, kasi pwede rin, kasama rin siya doon kung may magre-reklamong party, primary liable din lagi ang clerk of court sa pag-answer doon sa admin matter in case yung involving doon sa mga collection ng fees. Next question po, if our STF account is saving account, do we need to close it and open a new current account? Yes, so, oh, so kailangan yun. Hindi kayo pwedeng mag-maintain ng two accounts ng STF. So, hindi nyo pwedeng, hindi rin pumapayag ang landmark, napapapalitan yung savings to current. Kailangan i-close yung savings, then open a new current account. Okay po, thank you. And another question po, uh, our court has a problem in opening our STF account in Land Bank online, opening of account because Land Bank is asking for our own tax identification number. Are we going to secure a TIN for our court? Tony G. Hindi po. Um, anong, um, if, it, if the court could be identified, kasi um, inano na namin yan sa land bank eh, na hindi kailangan yung TIN number for those courts na mag open ng bank account with land bank. Sige po. So, I sent a message to the one who asked, please let us know kung aling court po kayo. Opo, para makall din maano namin yung land bank na tawagan yung branch na iyon. Okay po. So, another question, what if litigant pays on the last day of the month, then appear physically with documents after five days, when to issue the official receipts, since docketing will only happen upon physical appearance of litigant with the documents? No, hindi nga. Just like I said earlier, yung dito sa fortune pay, pag ginamit nila, you can verify the transaction already. So, hindi nyo kailangan hintayin yung, pag, yung physical appearance nung ng party. So, mag-i-issue na kayo ng uh, OR nung time na yun. So, kung, kung kulang yung documents na sinend nila electronically, so you can notify them. Pero yung date ng payment, date ng verification na pumasok doon sa account natin. Pag na-confirm nyo, na-verified na genuine yung payment na proof of transaction na pinaprovide niya sa inyo. So, meron nagsabi dito na nagbago daw yung kanilang STF account. So, sa nag, sa, sa, nagtatanong kung pwede mag-change ng account, yes, mag-email lang po ulit kayo sa amin sa e-payment at judiciary.gov.ph. Um, attorney Hilda, siguro last question na to. Yung problem daw po nila sa COA, gusto ng COA, current account, hindi savings account. How will they reconcile? Yes, yun yung inaano namin kasi baka malaki ang kanilang STF collections but they are still maintaining a savings account. So yun yung inaano namin pag masyadong malaki yung collections and in their assessment, hindi talaga siya bababa below maintaining balance. So better for them to open a current account. Kasi kung minimal lang naman yung collections, uh, maintindihan naman po yun ni, Land, ni COA bakit kailangan savings account lang ang i-open. Okay. So, thank you very much, Attorney Hilda. And time check, it's 12.17. So, I guess we cannot uh, really run through all the questions. And yung iba naman medyo same nature din yung mga tanong. So, uh, again, nire-remind ko lang po lahat, no na hindi nyo po gagamitin yung court credentials sa app sa portal lang po iyon. That's only really for your personal use and for you to verify if the QR code is working or if the app is uh, working for our court users. So, Ms. I Pat, guess that... May add, add lang ako doon sa, sa, sa question na kung month-end nag-file. So, ang sinagot ko lang pala doon kung small fortune pay yung gamit. So, kung yung ang ginamit naman, other mode ng payment, yung channel, so aside from hindi small claim yung kaso so you following oka circular 164 2020 so yung kaya nire-require ang clerks of course na i-enroll sa we access facility yung yung account ng fiduciary fund dahil doon yung ma-verify yung transaction so yung total amount paid ng party dapat makita nyo so yun din ang susundin nyo pag issue ng OR dapat ma-verify kung sinamit pa dala na notify sa inyo yung party nung araw na yon nung month end na yon ng transaction or proof of payment. So, dapat ma-verify nyo yun sa way access. 
online dahil yun yung yung issuance yun date ng issuance yun ng OR. So kung kulang yung documents, so you notify the party na kulang yung documents. So hindi niyo madadaket pero yung date ng OR, yun yung date ng verification ng payment. Any last uh, word from Sir Dexter or Attorney Hilda uh, and Ma'am Kath, Gabby, before we close our open forum? Ako, yung ano lang, so yung uh, registration form na we provided, so dapat ma-fill uh, in na yung mga information needed doon. So mayroon pang uh, 300 plus lower courts na hindi nag-accomplish ng form. So, Please accomplish na po yung form para sa pag uh, doon sa implementation ng nationwide implementation or yung other cases may implement yung other cases ng online payment, electronic payment. Thank you. Yes. Okay. So, Attorney Hilda, kayo po. Sig ano lang siguro, doon lang sa mga mag-open ng account, kung halimbawa um, meron pa silang mga ibang problems na ma-encounter so they could also um, communicate with us especially lalo sa revenue section ano lang nila kung ano pa yung problema nilang ma-encounter doon sa pag-open nila ng STF account yun lang po okay thank you very much po uh, ma'am Kat yes miss Pat any final words sa ating mga personal mm -hmm. Uh, anyway, thank you so much for allowing us to um, present to you today. And um, if you have any other question, feel free lang po to message us po sa Fortune Pay. Yung mga auditors, baka may additional ano, sasabihin, may question. Baka may reminder kayo sa ating mga court personnel. Auditors, please. So, siyempre, ano, I would like to reiterate, no, reminding all our court personnel na if you haven't received the, the login credentials for your account sa FPOP or sa Fortune Pay Online Portal, it's very important na you email us for that to be corrected. And uh, also, I've been seeing a lot of messages about the yeah, internet connectivity problems and also the barrier technologically because a lot of our uh, court stations that are in rural areas are worried about uh, the litigants. No? Uh, well, no, number one, it's not really the only option. The payment is just an additional mode of payment. Uh, they can choose pa rin to pay in cash personally sa court. But of course, we encourage uh, everyone to be part of the process no, of the switch of the digitalization of the court because uh, it's also a very important aspect considering uh, everything that has been happening in the country. And this is also why this is a priority of the court, you know, uh, being able to transact uh, cashless. Uh, and online is uh, the way forward. So we hope that we can all pitch in our efforts uh, to do this. So, wala na siguro tayong message from our auditors. Uh -huh. So for any other questions, uh, email na lang po kayo at epayment, epayment at judiciary.gov.ph. Ayan. So, uh, for the next part, uh, last part na po ito. I wait lang. May message pa sa akin. Ayan. May reminder pala si Sir Vince Valdez from MISO. Huwag <laughs> niyo daw po siyang i-email diretso. Mag-email daw po kayo sa epayment at judiciary.gov.ph. Ayan. For the username and password ha. Okay. So, thank you Sir Vince. And uh, now let's move to our next... Uh, Live po. Last na po ito. Sa ating mga ano, 909 attendees na natitira. Ito na po ang ating last uh, poll for today. It's the e-payment feedback form. Scan nyo lang po yung QR code dyan. And I'm also now sending uh, the, the link. That's live poll number 5. Pa-accomplish na lang po. 
this is very important because if you're actually if there are questions na hindi nasagot, pwede niyo pong ipadala dyan. Miss Pat, may message pala yung auditors. Eh, meron. Sige, uh, while they are doing the live poll. Uh, yung mga, uh, your respective MS Teams group, so always check daw yung email, yung judiciary account or yung email nung uh, member doon sa financial audit team ng region nyo. So regularly, the auditors are sending in clarifications and reminders there. So pakicheck po parate. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Sir Dexter. Right, so sana ma-populate pa rin yan ng ating mga natitirang 912 attendees. May mga question pala doon sa communication allowance ng clerks of courts. Yes. So, yung, yung communication allowance, entitled yung OCC clerk supports doon. So, yung sa branch, yung, yung judge ang nakaka-receive ng 5,000 communication allowance. So, OCC dapat nakaka-receive na okay lahat ng 5K. So, from, um, Attorney Hilda, from May yun, no? May to present na. Apo. So, lahat na po at Tony G na bigay na, no? Yung OCC clerk of, clerks of course, meron na. Nakaka-receive na lahat. Yes po. Thank you. Sir Dexter, no? Uh, mukhang talagang ano tong tanong na to, eh. So, ulitin ko, ah. If payment is verified but documents for docketing is not yet available, how can you issue OR if no docket number is assigned yet? Can we ask receiving personnel to assign docket number if no physical document is received yet? So, yung ganun, ang date lang naman kasi ng OR. So, hindi nyo pa may issue yung OR. Hindi nyo pa matatanggal doon sa, sa booklet siya. So, pwede nyo ihabol yung docket number paglagay sa OR. Pero yung pag, ang, ang, we're talking about here, yung date ng issuance ng OR. So, dapat nakaredy na yung OR nyo. Kung, kung hindi pa nga complete yung document, so you can uh, notify them to submit yung kulang. Then, yung information needed doon sa OR, ma-fill in nyo doon sa particular portion. Sir Dex, mayroon dito nagtatanong, no? If may glitch sa payment, ang sabi kanina dapat mag-contact sa Fortune Pay or kay Sir Dexter. So, ano daw ba ang official contact number? Yung Miss Kat, ano, uh, displayed yung number, yung email, yung number din nila, yung Fortune, pwedeng, uh, yung Fortune Pay. Tapos yung official ano natin, yung email at yung e-payment at judiciary.gov.ph. Mm -hmm. So, meron hotline yung FP, Fortune Pay. Ano nga ulit yung number, Miss Kat? Isha, call that map. Yes, please. Habang nagpo-populate pa tayo ng live poll. Which is actually important for attendance check. Okay na po, ma'am. Yes, we can see it. So, ayan yung phone support, 0917-635-2946. They also have a Viber chat support. Hanapin nyo lang po yung FPE Gov support. Okay, so continuous lang naman yung pag-fill out ng responses. So, by... I guess mga 12.45, we will close the form. So please accomplish that muna before you log out, siguro. So on behalf of, um, on behalf of the e-payment team, and on behalf of the Office of the Court Administrator, we would like to thank everybody who came, attended, and participated. Thank you very much, kahit dun sa mga nahihirapan talaga sa internet ngayon. We know how hard it is right now. And we really appreciate your participation. And we look forward to all your comments and recommendations so that uh, we can fine-tune our process for the e-payment. Having said that, uh, I think I can formally say that uh, this is the conclusion.
of our training workshop for the e-payment of legal fees in small claims cases. Maraming salamat po, Diyos Mabalos. Uh, and I hope you enjoy your lunch. Enjoy po tayo sa lunch. <laughs> 12.32 na. And thank you very much po sa lahat ng uh, nag-participate. And of course, to our speakers, thank you, Ma'am Kath, Sir Dexter, also Attorney Hilda for joining us for the Q&A. And also, uh, we'd like to acknowledge the auditors, very hardworking auditors who are helping us uh, track the implementation and rollout of the e-payment. No worry, don't worry po sa lahat. Uh, uh, the recording will be sent to everybody. And uh, we will be sending uh, more materials for your reference. All right, thank you. So, yung mga hindi nagpadala ng response, walang grab delivery. Joke lang, wala talagang grab delivery. <laughs> Ayan. Parang nagulat. Siguro yung mga nagulat may grab delivery. Paano? Okay, so thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you everyone. Bye. Thank you po. Thank you. Thank you. May mga nagsabi dito mag-hi din naman daw yung MISO team para nakakita naman daw nila kayo. <laughs> Mag-on cam daw kayo MISO. <laughs> We prefer working at the background po ma'am. Sorry po. Thank you. Thank you everyone. Ayun. So recognize natin sila Sir Jovi, Sir Vincent, Sir Darwin. For all the hard work. Ayan. So, reminder how we will be closing the link for the last poll at 12.45. So, if you don't uh, accomplish all five polls, kasi it's a factor with the attendance. So, reminder na lang po for everyone. Okay, so I guess uh, we can uh, end na our session. So thank you very much, everybody, and happy lunch. So stay safe. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye.